Hey folks, welcome to Giant Bomb's Bioshock Infinite live spoiler show. I'm Ryan Davis. We've got uh, a full couch of people who have finished Bioshock Infinite. It's true, we do. Jeff Gerstmann, Patrick Klepek, Brad Shoemaker, Whoa. Andrew Scanlon. I'm experts. the chair in the Yeah, he's, he's not even... Yeah, I'm not on that couch. This couch is bursting. We I'm are overloaded with, uh, with folks who have finished the game. And to be clear here, you should not be watching this right now if you have not finished... Bioshock Infinite. Right. Because assuming, if, assuming you care about that. But which, even then, like none of this is going to make sense to you right. if you haven't already finished the game because you won't have the point of contact. So, you know, stand back, I guess. Yeah. Uh, because we're going to be talking about the game here pretty explicitly, talking a lot about the, the story stuff and the, the world of Columbia. Uh, and simultaneously, in a sealed room, we have Vinnie <laughs> Caravella. Isolation chamber. Yeah, we have an isolation soundproof booth <laughs> where Vinnie Caravella Hyperbaric is... Hyperbaric vacuum sealed. <laughs> Only the finest of technologies uh, being used to, uh, to keep Vinnie unawares of what we're talking about as he finishes the game. Like, he's, right. he's here in Comstock House right now. Yeah, uh, so kind he's, of, he's kind of winding his way through. He, he texted me on the work on the way to work this morning, saying, "Hey, oh, yeah, sweet." He was like, "Hey, That's I'm rolling name. up on Emporia. Am I close to the end? He Should I keep so going?" So much of the health. Yeah. He's playing it so wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why would you do that? As soon as oh as God. soon as he hit me up this morning and say, "Hey, I'm, I'm here. Should I just try to finish it at work?" I was like. I fell in love with the idea of having somebody fresh off the mind fuck of the end of this game. Sure, so, so to Jeff, talk about you, it with. you finished this game last Saturday. Uh, n no, I well, I finished it the the day before it came out. Monday, right. okay. Monday, that, that Monday, um, right, right, right. And uh, yeah, and then and then you guys finished it not too long after couple, it came couple out. Couple days, yeah, yeah, a couple days after it came out. I think I was, I was Saturday. Yeah, it was, it was okay, last yeah. weekend. So me, yeah. I finished it that Wednesday. Really? Yeah. Right. So I knew I wouldn't have a chance because we were doing the uh, long GDC live streams. Yeah. Yeah. So I powered through. That's smart. I mean, I, I played through it in two sittings, like, but they were a week apart, so it was kind of strange. Right. I played up to the gunsmith, uh, and then that's when Ken Levine showed up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then Ken Levine showed up the next day. Yeah. Then we, I went to PAX. Then I came back, finished it, and then GDC started. That's a that's a weird gap to have there. Yeah, so so I had a lot of crazy ideas at that point mm. uh, with the the gunsmith stuff. Like you kind of seen the first uh, bloody nose bit when you when you meet Comstock. Right. Uh, and at that point, I was like, well, is this just going to be like you know? You, you, as I started to see the other guys freaking out with their bloody noses, I was like, so is Booker just going to be dead at the end of this? Is that going to be the weird? Secret is that real Booker is dead, and this is just some shadow of him in another dimension. Like that's where I was going. Sure. At that point, I mean, they start. I mean, they uh, they, they set the tone with the quote at the beginning of the game about right. transdimensional travel. So yeah, like, yeah. from the get go, you're like, okay, that's where right. my frame of reference. And immediately, your head starts thinking about all the other sci-fi tales you have seen that play with transdimensional travel. Yeah. And I feel like the game does a good job of playing with your expectations. Yeah, I, I think not just with that aspect of it, but I think with uh, you know, like what you expect from a game that has Bioshock written on the box, or what you expect out of a rational stuff yeah. like that. I think that you know they're they're able to say, oh, you know, we 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 think that people will have played, or, well, whatever. The, the game doesn't rely on you having played the original Bioshock. But it's self-aware. But yes, uh, and it, it's yes, it's it's self-aware, and, and it you benefit from having I mean, that it, previous it, experience. It plays with the 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 player expectation if you have played the original Bioshock. Of what's going to come next, of you know how this is going to turn. Right. Uh, that, that was probably my 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 single most favorite thing about the ending was what they they took what looks like an over reliance on all the tropes of Bioshock. You know. Right. Yeah. I mean, from like the looting interface and the sound when the objective pops up to like animatronic like Ken Levine voiced vending machines. I was but, like, but even just I was like, this is a little too Bioshock. But then they reframed that in the end. Even just the in a, in a really elegant way, yeah. like all the vigors and the right. salts and stuff. Like all that is clearly just like direct analogs to, uh, you know, the right. Adam and Eve and all the stuff that you had in uh, yeah. Uh, but they, they the original Bioshock. But in like the original Bioshock, that stuff was way more central to the fiction. Right. Of like, okay, we're in this underground or underwater city, and these slugs and you know genetic splicing and all this stuff. Not, and and also when you have these warring factions, like it starts explaining like this is why there are gun vending machines everywhere. Uh, whereas it, I don't think they really touch on that so much in Infinite. Uh, it's more just look, guys. 
but, but I think I mean, there, it, but it, I think it, the it is contextualized, but, but like I think it was way more meaningful in Bioshock, because, the original, because it was tied directly into the setting, the reason for the downfall of Rapture. Sure, like, right. It was part of this like self-corruption of the self, and part of like the you know the the whole like self empowerment. Uh, so it was way more integral to the to the narrative. Whereas here, it's sort of they made a construct for it, but it really doesn't feel like these citizens of Columbia are going around and like shopping at these things that right. often. Right. Yeah. But I, but I think this this part here that he's on, I got stuck here so too confused. because the arrow doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in, it in keeps wanting to hop up onto no, the, no, the just just skyline. He needs to hang a left and go around that so corner. So when I played this, I got. Uh, I wanted to like, you know, you come into a new area, you start picking up everything that you can, look for um, uh, voxophones, stuff like that. Yeah. I... No, no, no turn around, turn around. Nope. Got way into turn. that. Nope. You nope. can't do this. You can't do this. <laughs> yeah! yeah! All right. That took me way longer. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I went through all this area without triggering the uh, find the tears. So I like, went to the cemetery. Yeah. Yes. I did the so same thing. I did, I did I, a, a bunch of wandering around. I, didn't, I got I didn't all the way too. back to here and then was like, I am not in the right place. I, didn't, I really didn't care for the way this area was designed, or at least the way the objectives failed to tell you what the point of this openness was. Because you do end up just wasting a lot of time wandering around here. Well, I would go halfway Only, down one path and then well, be like, well, yeah. I need to go back to the other paths before I trigger the event. And then I ended up finding uh, Lady Comstock's Grave, yeah, I did, I did yeah. too. way ahead well, of like what should be the revelation. Uh, of sounds it. like it's right around the corner. It sounds like most people do that because you I started down those paths and then ended ended up not having that happen. I, I my, scored, my motivation uh, to go through all that stuff was looking at that big map they show you of right. the area and seeing that like the the music store was there, and I'm like, okay, there has to be some explanation about of the music, the music sure. of Bioshock Infinite, right. all of this anachronistic stuff. Like, how is this happening? And uh, sure enough, there's a, a voxophone over there. So I, mean, I did, yeah, did the same thing. For me, for me, it was just having the objective of go to Comstock House. I was like, well, that's got to be the end game. I'm not going to be able to see this stuff again. I better look at it yeah, now. When in, exactly. when in fact, you get there and they turn you right back around and send you yeah, back yeah. to see all this stuff. That I had already seen. So right. At some point, I, I think I just looked at this area and went, well, this area is too large. Like, they'll probably have reasons to send me around it later. And so at some point I actually stopped doing what you did. It's just weird because this this is the only instance of this sort of level right, design right, in the yeah. game where you have these three right. distinct yeah. paths that are really Shoot big. Him. Yeah, the game I mean the game is is just intensely linear up to this point. Or like you, I started to laugh by like the fourth instance of Elizabeth being like, "We could go here right. or maybe we could explore right. and check out shop. this bar." No, you go to that bar, you get the Man, he's guitar got bit. Fast reload on that gun, right? Yeah, yeah, that he guitar, does. It's it's there's a lot of instances where, like, those random bits with Elizabeth where there's one actually here. I don't know, maybe not here, but where she'll, like, she leans down and she, like, folds the arms of one of the character models and, like, yeah. kind of says, yeah. like, a goodbye. That seems pretty clear you could miss that. Yep. Um, if you I don't know what you're talking about. I did miss really? that. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's... That sort of stuff really made me appreciate uh, and kind of overlook the... Uh, Sort of the problematic stuff a little yeah. bit that you've talked about, like where the enemies just avoid her. Right. Yeah. Um, Another little frustrating thing here is every time you reboot, relaunch the game, it gives you all those tool tips again. <laughs> yeah. Which well, I turned off. I, I didn't no, run into that problem go, because I only booted the game up twice. You you just go in the options and turn off adaptive training, and they stop popping up. Right. But why does it come up every time? Like no other game does that. Yes. Like, that, that's all a, the tutorial that's a bug. bits every that single time. Be, that is. That is. That cannot be intentional. Uh, well, I think it's. I think it's. Well, if you're not using the right item here, you probably don't know you need to, or something. That's why it's uh, adapted. Well, yes, they, uh, they, there are reasons for them to have that training, but not the way. But they don't need to tell me to, to how to access the bigger wheel every time right. I put the game yes. up. That's, <laughs> I think, uh, that's yeah, the issue. Yeah, again, I think it's for people who they do need to tell. Uh, I mean, as as painfully linear as this game is, I feel like they're really lucky that their fiction and their art design and their world building and all that other stuff yeah. is as good as it is. I never felt like it was because, painfully linear. Well, it's just I mean, go, it's, it's go here, hit this thing, go here. Do yeah, this. like, like it's, you know, I mean, I mean you, like, you could follow that arrow around the entire game. That's what but I'm saying. Like, structurally, you know, structurally, off the path is where you find the voxophones, and there, there are plenty of reasons to. That's that's what I mean. To I mean, wander, you know? structurally, going through the game is not that different from playing a Call of Duty game. Sure, from point to point to point. I, I look at it a little more like Halo, where you know you've got these rooms of an encounter that you can kind of approach with your arsenal. Well, yeah, because in Halo, the combat is one of its primary reasons for being. Where, yeah. like in, in this, like the, the combat often, with the exception of the skyline 
kind of the, the bigger skyline encounters, which were really fun. Yeah. The combat was something to just kind of slog through to get to the next. I'm not the sure why they the didn't story. have more mm -hmm. skyline stuff because yeah. those were apps. Like as soon as I saw the skylines, I was like, now I want to do the combat. That, that was like yeah. that, I was setting traps at that point. Like I was having like any time they introduced the uh, the handyman, right. like he was really fu he was only fun to fight in the the skyline encounters right. because you could get around and yeah. then he's electrocuting the skylines. Yep. Um, I really wish they had leaned into that a little bit more. Maybe that would have made them less special. Um, but I, I found it like really fun to like slow oh, down on the oh, skylines, well, reverse, I died here like too. setting traps. Right. Uh, so I, I, the thing that I, I want to touch on here uh, early is you know watching Vinny go through this and and you know hopefully getting a fresh perspective on on how this game ends. Uh, you know as you play through this game. You, you do start trying to formulate your own theories about like where this is going, what's going to be significant later on, because you definitely get this feeling of, you know, this thing was put here, not for me to understand now, but when I have the context later, it will make a lot more sense. So I'm, just, I'm curious to, to hear from you guys, like, like before you got to the end and everything was kind of laid out, and even then I think there's, we, we have plenty of room for interpretation talk about you know how, how that ended up but I'm curious just to, to hear from you guys like where your heads were at uh, earlier in the game or if there were things that you were looking at that you thought like this is gonna shake out into something more meaningful later you know once mm. once I got to the point where uh, you kind of I mean you know obviously the the gunsmith stuff you you're you're leaping through tears and changing stuff there but once once it happens again and you start getting to this this, this part of the game where you hear them talking about Booker as if he's a hero of the revolution, and, sure. and and how the Vox are really you know on on the move. At that point, I became pretty disconnected from the story and got to a point where I was like, well, I don't, I'm not convinced that any of this matters now, right? Because we'll probably end up leaping through some other tear into yeah. some other situation. So I sort of don't care about. Daisy, I sort you know like like you, the you make, like going through the gunsmith section. You're making like two or three leaps into other realities, right? Away from the base reality that you had started at. I, yeah, I, yeah, I definitely yeah. Like the second that you walk through and she says, "I don't think there's like a way we can come back if we go through this tear." Yeah, like the first time you move into a whole new like the first time you do your sliders act or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I felt a weird sense of detachment from all the stuff I had done because like everything I've done up to this point just got. Kind of invalidated, right? Because we're in this new world now with all these other extraneous. I, I sort factors. of looked at it like uh, when I was going through those other terrors. Yeah, I agree with you, Jeff. That like, okay, what I'm doing right now doesn't doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to survive yeah. to get back to the base reality. Yeah, that's what I thought. Is there would eventually you would you would get back into your kind of a timeline, yeah. or like, as soon as you get up there and you see like old Elizabeth, like looking out over the destroyed. Like New York, yeah. That's such a great scene. Yeah, that's but like, such an just, amazing scene. It's just that was so cool because it gets so dark, and you're like, I just, I just want to go home. I just want to go back <laughs> to the way it was. Right. And then they give that to you, but not, or or do they? I mean, because like from there you go back to. I mean, is that even the main timeline anymore? Well, I mean, who knows? Know. It looks like yeah. it, and it felt like it, and it was yeah. just like, okay, back to you're back to, to at least to get another chance. To, yeah. yeah, I don't to, know. I, I like that that dynamic, that swing. I like that a lot. I felt I felt like at that point I felt like the ideas of place and time had kind of lost meaning as far as the game's storyline went. It did right. very much become focused on the relationships between these characters and their development and where they were going. Yeah, like I, I became much more interested in okay, you know, how does how does Booker really fit into all this stuff? See, I started thinking uh, at this point, like because they're playing, they begin playing so fast and loose with what reality you're in, I started thinking, okay, like none of this, like we're going to pull back and it'll be just like Matrix style Booker's, you know, sitting in an insane asylum or something. Mm. Uh, just, just, also just because of how insane the reality of this place is and everyone just takes it as matter of fact of like, oh yeah, it's flying city in the sky in, you know, 1912. I never, that sort of like a fu fundamental, like, grasping this game, never really bought into that too much. Like, I just, I, I, I get it. Like, yeah. you just sort of have to assume, yeah, the world was okay with this. Yeah, but, I was, like, I never fully bought this idea that, like, the world just allowed this city with incredible technology just to float into the sky. Well, that was, the whole thing was was that it was supposed to be super America, going around right. showing people how great America was. So yeah. I was I was really uh, thinking a lot about and putting a lot of stock into the the music stuff. Yeah. Uh, because I'm like, okay, they are they obviously have some sort of access 
to another reality or the future. So, so my thought early on with that stuff, and particularly with that alongside with like what sort of tech, crazy technology could they possibly be using to keep this floating city in yeah, the it's sky? Clear, in it's, clear, it's clearly not just fans going like right. This. So, uh, <laughs> so I started thinking like, okay, they are stealing. They're they're getting their stuff from the future. They figured out right. some way yeah. to get into the to the future, and then you're going to find out that you know Booker wasn't even born until you know fifty years or you know hundred years in the future. Uh, yeah, I guess is the that's kind of the timeline. Uh, so th- that was that was my early uh, theory on on what was actually going on here. I don't know if I, at some point when you sort of jumped through the terrors, I sort of gave up trying to figure it out and was like, I'm just going to go for this ride. Yeah, yeah. And instead was like wondering how they were, like what what thematic elements of the original Bioshock they were going to continue on. Like it seemed like they set up this choice in New York and Paris, and I wouldn't have been surprised at least when. Halfway through the game, that that sort of became the ending, yeah. which was right. like, like left trigger like, for how like, do you how do you feel about your relationship with Elizabeth? Like which one do you choose to go with? Like or do is you it, go you know, to New York? The, the bird in the cage, like the pendant stuff. Like how does that figure? This, which, is, I don't, such a, this is a great scene here. It ends up yeah. from what I've read makes zero impact. Okay. Like it is yeah. purely a cosmetic choice. But Wait, that was kind of that was kind of the idea, right? Was that, like none of these choices really mattered. Well, yeah, well I mean, well, well the, I mean, like, the that, first that choice at the beginning of the game that comes back. Uh, Which one? The with the couple, whether you right. whether you are hitting them oh, or not. Oh. Um, I mean, the coin. The, the, I think. I feel like the. It doesn't matter in terms of your specific playthrough how it plays out, but in t- the coin flip, you know, is like the 123rd time. This right. is the 123rd yeah, yeah. instance of running through this scenario. Yeah. I think when you're talking about those choices and and the the characters. A joke back about what you chose or didn't chose. That's just a reflection of how many times these people have gone through the thought right, experiment exactly. to like, try and yeah, solve like the loop that they've been on. But even when when that happened, I didn't necessarily look at it as like Booker has done this this many times. They have so done. Much they have the, yeah, watched that, Booker do or yeah, a, a yeah. version of Booker. Well, that, that's the thing. Um, it's like that. Like the the choices you make in game not manifesting in any really meaningful way was sort of an echo of the like at the end, you know, where he's. Back in the baptism scene, and he's like, "I don't want to." He tries to walk away. I don't want to do this, but she says, "But you already have." Yeah. yeah. You know, like the like events are kind of set, and they will right. happen. Yeah. Whether or not you want them to play out that way. Well, they they, they echo that in the uh, how do you pronounce the the scientist's name? Lutes. Lutes. I, Lutes. I've I've never seen a more commonly misspelled name. Yeah. Like I've seen lettuce and latrice <laughs> and like. <laughs> Them lettuce twins. It's, it's been r- pretty entertaining. And they always have that common phrase throughout the game of like, you know, Liz have lived, will live, right, yeah. has died, will die. Uh, like, what are you doing, Vinny? Essentially Can't saying it won't matter. Doing? It's Vinny, come on. He's looking for secret stuff. It's gonna, we're going to be here for nine hours. <laughs> he... Vinny would be the best QA tester <laughs> in the world. <laughs> In an alternate timeline. Yes. Yeah, he already is. Yeah, he, he tested this. Yeah. What is he doing? <laughs> He's doing. Is he trying to kill himself? I think he is. He wants to see what happens if he kills himself without uh, Elizabeth there. Th- oh. th- that happens at the beginning again. The Assuming time. you die down there. Like, oh, I, didn't, we ran I didn't die. <laughs> so like, he can't do it. <laughs> I mean, it just takes you back to the room uh, and you walk out. Like it's no, not. I'm saying like, he, but he probably has only seen like Elizabeth reviving him. Right? Uh, well, yeah. you can die before you get her. Yeah. In there. I know. What I'm saying is he probably. Oh, did he probably hasn't. So what does that. happen? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, just it a goes back scene. to the room. The the you just walk through your the office door. and you walk through the door and, and yeah, the exact same thing. So like this section this is really was, interesting because this is where you start seeing Elizabeth as like calm stocks. Yeah. Like, here, here's, here's your bad ending. And But this also is kind of, yeah. this starts laying down the groundwork for like more, more significantly, like they hint at it with, with Booker and the Vox Populi, like that reality where Booker's the, the martyred hero for the Vox. Uh, but I feel like this is where they really start laying yeah. down the groundwork for the possibility of, you know, Booker's outcome being so radically different. Right. Yeah. I, it's, 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 it's tough coming to one of these shock games with the Legacy of System Shock 2 and Bioshock that both turn on bait and switch kind of plot twists. Mm-hmm. That you come to this like actively trying to pick it apart as you're as you're playing through it and figure out what it is that they're going to pull the rug out from under you on. I think that's so, that's what worked really well about this game. Maybe as well, you try to pick it apart, you you just get further and further into your own yeah, damn yeah, head. Yeah. 
So this is what I got here. I yep, thought that is. I just. I have. I did exactly this. So is that weird? Walking, walking I into will this room. Do. Have done. Walk, walking into this room, I thought that that was it. Well, you see that statue of her, and it says Our Lady Elizabeth. I was like, oh, that's it. She's actually the bad guy. Like I thought that oh, was going okay. to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I they, thought that was going to be the fulfillment. She of, has a couple of, of a the Kim Levine twist. Kind of. It's my favorite dance. Move. Mysterious, mysterious lines earlier, like kind of knowing lines about. The nature of reality right. that made me think like, oh, she's just taking us for a ride. Like, right. she is actually the force of evil here that is for somehow making you perceive the rest of this as being the bad part right. when it turns out. But I had become so Kaiser attached. Kaiser Soze style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had become so attached to the character at that point that I really did not want that to be the case. Right. No, me, me neither. Yeah. Like, I could not, I could not I'd abide. Be so, I'd be so bummed if, you, yeah, the, I your could not abide a time for, line. Yeah, where Elizabeth was the bad guy. Well, they, they, they sort of like... Have their cake and eat it too, with like essentially giving you the multiple ending scenarios right. without putting that choice into the player, and then the way it ties in thematically to the end is that all that stuff did happen, right. or would, yeah. would happen, or can happen. So with with this not, part's fucking crazy. Yeah, this part's yeah. super creepy. And I started wondering since like everyone that's in here is like out of time right. and also is wearing these like founder masks. Yeah, yeah. Like I started thinking we're gonna get to the end of this and we're gonna pull a mask off and they're like all gonna be bookers. Sure. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or something like that. Oh, oh, oh. got saw. Did it. Done it now. I ended up fighting almost all of these guys. <laughs> yep. Uh, I after this first battle, I snuck through the rest of this yeah. level. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's not like it's, it's not particularly hard battle, but it's also pretty easy to get yeah, past just it. Just get around them. And at this point, you were desperate. This to was just another see fight where I wish I turned on damage numbers because I wasn't sure if they were taking damage from guns, and I ended up meleeing all of these guys, um, like this. I rarely used melee. Really? Yeah. yeah. Were you shooting people most of the time, or like all uh, powers? Or? I tried to use. I was playing on hard. Maybe that's why. Cause uh -huh. I never wanted to get close to anybody. That makes uh, sense. Do, you, do you think this there's any sort of like storytelling or you know kind of uh, setting significance to just how like violent and brutal a lot of this combat I is? I think it, that ends up being uh, there. He got his wish. Um, I think that ends up just being, you know, your your light and dark. You know, you've got this world that is at times totally beautiful and bright, yeah, and full of this weird, uh, twisted hope, uh, or you know, whatever it is. But you've you've got this colorful world, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then just right off the bat, as soon as the, the combat starts, as soon as you can start fighting, yeah, just. Fucking brutal. Yeah, totally. Um, just blood I, everywhere from your, from yeah, your gunshots. Exactly. The, the the melee, like those extended melee kills. Yeah, and I, snapping I think heads, that's, tearing heads off, shredding their heart. I feel like that is a really effective way for them to paint the appropriate picture of Booker as not a fucking good man. Sure. Yeah. Like, and the sort of you know, under undercurrent that this whole place kind of has of there's something really evil about. Yeah. It this place. Yeah. But I think they, like, that's that was what was so amazing to me right when you start this game, is how beautiful and bright and sunny and, you know... Oh, yeah, you feel like, it how, how everything's so celebratory all the time. Yeah. Like, even before combat starts and you start getting the weird, like, you know, racist undertones of stuff, it's like, this is already creepy as hell. Yeah. There's already something not right about this. Yeah, they, they really, I, I feel like the, the opening moments of this game, they, they set it up terrifically. I mean, the lighthouse at the beginning of the game, mm -hmm. you know, just playing off the original Bioshock, but instead of, you know, I, I guess the, the opening to the original Bioshock, sure, it's a little weird, but you're not sure why it's weird. You're not sure how it's weird yeah. when you go to the lighthouse, when you go underwater. Um, this one, you this know one, it's weird. There's lights out the sky, and you're like, "This is." I'm ringing these bells, this, and it's just this great. You know, it's like close and close now. Yeah, totally, yeah. 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 It's so good. Um, and it just, you know, right, right there, you're just like, "Wow, this is so, such a better looking game." These clouds, all the stuff, and and the the rise up to Columbia, uh -oh. Oh, like one of several. <laughs> this game does elevators so well. Yes, it uses yeah, them to like its the things you see out of that yeah. window. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, like almost every single one uh, we'll have some great, just like come down in this yeah. reveal. Yeah, um, that stuff's all great. I felt like there were a lot of cases where they were just going out of their way to find reasons for you to be fighting more guys, though. You know, it's like, well, we can't have you fighting policemen for the entire game, so then they have to start coming up with other types of enemies. But then, 
the minute that I took the elevator down into Shantytown, I was like, all right, finally some people who are not completely morally reprehensible. Like, and all then right, you stole some, something from them and they started fighting, Not even right? that. Uh, like, I, yeah, I, I, I don't that. know what it that was. That was but so annoying because, like because there's a bunch of items that are, don't qualify as stealing and then one of them in that pile just is a stealable well, I saw item. an infusion and just ran over in its direction and as soon as I ran past I mean, three there, guys near it, they were like, hey! And I'm like, oh, jeez. There's virtually no way to avoid fighting the, like, the downtrodden in like the undercity, essentially. <laughs> like, what? People, when people, you, when you possess those guys, oh, right. they take themselves right. out, and right. that guy just had the yeah. stick, so. That's great. <laughs> Death by stick. Like, it, it kind of it didn't matter what area you were in, whoever the indigenous residents were, were going to be shooting at you. Yeah, you know? no matter think, where you, you know, were. As somebody, you're jumping around tears, like, you know, the, the good guy, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, like, that stuff ends up changing. Yeah. Like you, you know, get, your perspective on the, the conflict changes so much that I, I didn't really have a problem with that. Yeah, and also, I, I love that. You can, you can eventually hand wave a whole lot away in this game by just saying, yeah, we're in a different timeline yeah. where a lot of things are very different and now, also but it, it you know still feels it, a little it's cheap at some sometimes. point you're like this is a first person shooter I know conflict is the name of the game but uh, yeah but but again uh, you know I felt like the, the the combat got a little rote and was kind of the weakest part of the game like mm -hmm. all the combat in this section feels completely tacked on like the the idea of like trying to stealth around those kind of rapture esque the, big daddy the, looking the, the boys of silence yeah like the, that's actually, all right but like then the actual engagement with those with the enemies with the masks like, not fun at all. I mean, it's basically Serious Sam, just a bunch of guys running at you. Yeah. Uh, I want to see if he... I wanna, yeah, see if he has learned anything about how to avoid conflict here. Use tub. Use tub. At this point, like, everything... I was hoping that if I used every tub in this world, something would happen. Or, like, turned on every faucet. Because there's... Right. It's, it just feels so weirdly vestigial of, yeah, the, you know, toilets work. Oh, what's he gonna do? Everything about this environment, this level, from like, the snow to the guys, the masks on the guys, to the evil Elizabeth voiceover stuff, uh -huh. was so detached from reality and kind of abstract and surreal at this point that, yeah, at this point I figured the story had moved entirely, like, into Booker's head or onto some alternate plane of existence, you know, like this felt completely out of time and space. But looking back on it now, knowing where this is leading, right. like it's easy to see how this actually is kind of grounded within the, the reality of the game's fiction, you know, this is the manifestation of what happened when he wasn't there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And she, but, then, but then also getting peeks into... The kind of the nightmare of Columbia was allowed to travel along its eventual trajectory without him to, to intervene. <coughs> And, and here's what happened. So I wonder, like, like if there's any significance, because you know, it's it's as you're approaching Comstock House, and you pretty much just get swept up into some other tear. Like, why is this? Like, if, is there even any sort of story significance oh, to? Oh. oh man, he just doesn't care. Nope, that's not gonna work. Oh, he's got no out. bullets. He's pretty melee spec from I was talking to him beforehand. It sounds like he's. Pretty well equipped to deal with just about that, anything. Got that so. pre order stuff. Oh, well, you know, like when you talk to old Elizabeth, you know, she's, you know, it implies that she was basically the last of her energy to bring you here. Yeah. So it seems like at that moment where Elizabeth is kidnapped, then old Elizabeth uses her powers to pull you mm. into. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. the implication there, I think, is, you know, old Elizabeth was on this track the whole time. Sure. Succeeded and then looked at it and went, oh shit, <laughs> why would, oh, I probably shouldn't have ought to done this. But how does that tie into. The brother and sister, like, is, is she complicit or is it accidental? Like, is she aware that the thought experiment is occurring? Uh, you mean old Elizabeth? Yeah. Whether she's aware of the Lutest twins yeah. monkeying around with stuff? Hard, hard to, hard to know, I guess. Because with like, without the information she gives you, you cannot complete like the the alteration of the timeline. Maybe there are other ways that you it could have finished, but she is you know pretty integral to that playing out. But well, doesn't seem to tip her hand. Because that's the the twins are telling you about like, hey, there is you know, the, there's the whole piano sequence where they're yeah, like playing the notes that's and be true. like, ah, but the instrument's not right. Like they're dropping the hints of, yeah. hey, this is what you're going to need to do at some point. I think so. It, I, I imagine they know that Booker is going to end up. Talking well, talking they, to Elizabeth. Elizabeth. well, it seems like they have seen this happen exactly. potentially hundreds of times because before. Of that. Okay. And, or and might, the, might the, the, ending, the ending of the game is is the significance there is like you know theoretically 
something has finally changed. Right. I think I tried to just um, not think about any story stuff. Yeah. As, as much as possible. I think that that's sort of... I, I just... I ended up at some point just like, okay, this is a ride. I'm going to take it in. Right. And... I'm going to let them present it to me. I'm not going to even think about it. Yeah. I'm going to say, that was weird. I wonder what's up with that. And then move on. Yeah, and, and kind of tr trusted that they will explain enough of it. Yeah. I don't um, I don't know that they did. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but I don't... I really feel like that... The ending, the ending is simultaneously a little too dense with information and also doesn't clarify some of the most important well, points. Well, I think, you know, for, for me it was that there were some some things, like the things I wanted answers to, it seemed like some of that stuff were in Vox phones that I did not find. There, there is, there you know, is the, a, the initial thing of, of that, like, okay, yeah. how did Elizabeth get her, her powers? Well, that, never, that I did find that Vox phone, well, I just didn't necessarily put it together. It's, it's when you first meet her, right, in her tower, when they, this the Lutes quote about it's not about what she is so much as what she isn't. Correct. But eh, y yes, yeah. Um, I, don't know, I think like it's like it's sci-fi stories answering everything. You can certainly critique the story for not answering the right questions. Like there, there are paths we go down, go down with that. But I think any good sci-fi story leaves just enough ambiguity right. that you want people to be arguing over what was and wasn't answered. Well, uh, because yeah, I, I almost, agree. almost always the answers are not going to be satisfied. I, I agree with yeah. you, but there's a difference between wanting everything answered and just expecting some basic kind of internal consistency to the things that are going yes, on. Yes, yeah, there should be logical consistency. Yeah, and, and I think it allows you to infer of, of the sci-fi stories that can get away with even kind of missing some of that stuff. It is when you start dealing with multiple, re like you know, a multiverse or time travel or anything like that. Um, like it, it gets it's at a certain point. I mean, this isn't Primer, thank God. Which, yeah. by, by the way, is the movie I was talking about on the podcast yeah. earlier this week. You know, there aren't twenty-eight different realities and timelines to keep up with here. There's only like three or whatever. So, yeah. thankfully, they don't build too many layers on top of it. But still. When you have that many different crisscrossing sequences of events, it, could, it gets really hard to tie them all together in yeah. a believable and understandable so way at the end. where's the paradox for you? Where's the point where you're like... They, a lot of it is they start playing a little too fast and loose with the like multiple versions of people versus like, a, like an all... Like, like they, you kind of end up with an all booker at the end, you know? It's not that there are bookers from multiple universes, it's that somehow this booker is the booker out of time that kind of... Whose, whose consequences trickle down to all the other bookers, you know, like... I, I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Well, Isn't it just about easier. making one timeline? It'll that be easier to talk about when we actually get into the ending here, uh, but, but, you know... One, one thing I will why, say... Why is it that one instance of drowning him at the baptism is, is going to correct every I Ill? think that's the thing. It doesn't. Yeah. It's creating think, one timeline yeah. that, like, a single instance of the timeline that doesn't have like, all this, these this shitty endings. This game keeps happening forever. Yeah. It's totally futile. Is she, well, is so she I, okay with that, though? Because she says we have to, like, I forget what the quote is or how she phrases it, but, you know, she says, this is what I have to do to fix this. And then all the other versions of her blink out. Like, does that not imply... I, the fact that every Elizabeth, down to the last one, when they kind of... Like, blinks out of that one smashed, reality. Smashed to black, but why were they all there in the first place, then? Because that's how this timeline is, is culminated. That's uh, how this stuff is. Like she, she can out, be, right? she can be a speck out of time and come into this one to ensure that this Booker creates one timeline where none of the other bad endings occur. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's just it's not that the other ones don't exist. It's that finally one exists. Right. That doesn't have this stuff. Mm, maybe, maybe that's enough for her. I don't know. But the question that I have, though, is... And, or you know, maybe she doesn't really but know. But I thought, as, w as we start getting into the, the real end game here, uh, is the <clears throat> the Comstock Booker loop. All right, oh, don't do it. Don't no. Do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at a point, it's just as fast to just, like, whack your way through this as it is to around. But, uh, I, but wasn't, wasn't it the entire motivation of the Lutesses? to do all this because they wanted to correct this horrible wrong that they had wrought. Sure. Like, they created... But they also have, have sort of, like, you know, trans-dimensional awareness to to know that it's going to happen if somewhere If there are anyway. truly an infinite number of lighthouses, cities, and mans, then there's no way to stop any of that stuff. It's all about just create, creating yeah. their own version of the timeline. All right, maybe, maybe we need to do a close reading of the ending when he gets through it here. Uh, 
So, so yeah, a my lot, question. There are a lot, of, a lot of people out there have, have read this or interpreted this as negating everything that's ever happened in the Bioshock game, like the the because the, there's all there are so many references to pulling it out at the root. You know? Yeah. They're always talking about going back to the source and cutting it off there, and then never allowing it to happen at all, which which I took to be their. But at the same time, there's always a lighthouse, always a man, always a city. Sure. Which like, I found to be a pretty elegant aspect of the ending uh, as a way to justify this game's kind of blatant similarities to the last one. Sure. It's not, it, 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 like that That line in and of itself pretty much justifies any of the other absurdity in this world. Like, the things that, like, this seems like they did this just because it was in the first Bioshock. Well, they talk about uh, constants and variables. Yeah. And that there are certain constants to reality or our reality and then there are variables. And like the decision of Booker is a variable and not a constant, but is treated as a constant until you go and make it a variable. So the one thing that I want to know that, I, that I'm a little unclear on, there's a lot of stuff I'm unclear on, but this, this part I think makes a, a big impact on how things end up playing out is where in the timeline Booker chooses to either be baptized or not. It's because then that ends up informing, like what Comstock knows, what he has experienced. I think it, it has to be. Well, it's clearly after Wounded Knee. It's after Wounded but Knee, but before, it's, I guess it's it's a question of whether it's before or it. after Anna. It's it's before. It has to. Yeah, be. it's before. I think it has to be. Because otherwise, you just have this loop of right. Comst. You know, Comstock becomes right because of the you know loss of Anna. And then he knows that to get her back, he has to go and steal her again from Booker, which then just causes Booker to become Comstock again, potentially over and over again. But if it's I, earlier I than that, that, it is. I think it is. I think it's just that they're that the, the two. Well, it's the same guy, but right. their their lives assumed very different trajectories from that exact moment. Right. I think I must have missed a log or something because I've seen a lot of people talking about Comstock Booker apparently experienced an actual vision during the baptism. Did anybody hmm. read anything about that? The angel Columbia showed him a vision of the city or something like that? Does that ring any bells to anybody? Yeah, yeah. but where? I thought that was just more Comstock horse shit. Where do they talk about that? That might have been a, vo a Voxophone. That, I think that yeah, was it's a, a Comstock Voxophone. Okay. So is that how they, ex I if I is that that how they explain why he would go build a city yeah, in the sky? Like, I, is I, it like there is a timeline that exists where you go build a city in the sky, but the only reason that happens is because old... Booker gets a vision of a potential future self. Right, like that's that's how it's been. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is purely from what I've read on forums because again I missed that that. This is log. my favorite one. But <laughs> I don't think I saw that one. Yeah. yeah. Well then, and then look at. Yep. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, that's brutal. Oh, did but, this say 1989? No, 1909. Oh, no, like okay, that was right. the day that yeah. that was filmed. Um, if he did, in fact, receive a vision, you know, was it was it a tear? Like, was he seeing mm. a tear right. as he was being baptized? Was it like hypoxia to the brain because he was being drowned? Sure. Or, you know, is that just another piece of Comstock BS? Yeah. But I, although, although, again, like once you play through the game, like once you have the, the revelation for Comstock. Like, a lot of the stuff where he's talking about, like, the, the wounded knee voxophones. Right. Where he's talking about, like, none of the soldiers respected me until I went and murdered all of these, you know, women and children at, at wounded knee. Uh, which is basically, you know, him talking about, you know, Booker's experience at wounded right. knee. So, like, that's a, that's a case of, like, oh, this just sounds like either he's telling, telling stories. Right. Or this was this other traumatic event, but the fact that it's framed in one end of like, you're this tough badass who made it through Wounded Knee and you are this brutal savage who yeah. was I, stained by this experience. And I think it's just hard to take any of that stuff at face value because sure. of the nature of of the Comstock character. You know, it's... There's the switch. All right, here we go. One thing I will say about Primer was when I went and saw it, uh, upstream color, the new movie from that guy. Um, he was. Oh, did you take, see? Did you see upstream? Color? Yeah, he was taken aback and not necessarily super supportive of the over analysis of yeah. the logic of the film because he never himself thought it through that much. Right. He he was more interested in spinning a yarn. Like yeah. he had a logic set up so that you could buy 
when it starts spinning out of control. Right, right. But it's not like he was like, I don't have like a tapestry in yeah. my apartment that explains how it all works. I, I, that's I think sort that's, that's how I feel. And about I think that's how this? sci-fi yeah. has yeah. to work. I think that's yeah. okay. Like yeah. it doesn't necessarily. It has to let you buy into the madness so that you have, can have a conversation about it, which leads to other interesting revelations or introspections Enough about the story. Enough of what they show in this game throughout is good enough to make it all work. Right. And I think any yeah any fiction like this you you start to really really scrutinize every last line and every last thing yeah. you know then it becomes like ah, that was a good moment yeah. that's, that that that, good, that, 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 jumped, that jumped me yeah. then all of a sudden you're just like, there's back. no way Back to the Future could happen and then you're just like who why are we even talking it helps me that's, really really gullible like well, me there's a sure yeah. yeah when I when I heard uh, God only knows I literally thought man did did the Beach Boys really just take an old song I, I ended up looking it up. Like at that moment, I paused the game. And went, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And went and saw. You know, did, was that a, a cover? Uh, and then when it wasn't, and then you see the thing saying the songs of tomorrow today. At that point, it's like, well, oh, I didn't see that. That was definitely my yeah, first. Wow, song. I didn't there's even know. I didn't even notice the that. songs it, of yeah. tomorrow it today. Even, it wasn't until I went to that the music guy's apartment and you know looked through the portal. Right. That I was like, oh. I must have been hearing other covers of songs. I didn't even notice. Like the Beach Boys one was the only one I really. Yeah, there's. Uh, I mean. Oh, what is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tainted Love Sun is in well. there. Oh, there's a ton. And I was like, wow, is that just an there. old like southern song? Like again, I had this like sure, super it, it cool. Could, it could sound like like some old folk song. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't pick up on most of them. I got, so I got, until I, I went back so and listened, good. then I was like, oh. I got I got all but the only one I missed was Shiny Happy People. Oh, is that oh, in there? I didn't. Oh, oh wow. Jeez, that's awesome. Where uh, is that? In the I, don't, game? I don't know. I only know because I, because I saw a list of the songs. Right in the, cre- uh, in the credits, that was fun to see all the ones that right. you missed. I so so I agree with what you're saying about picking apart the mechanics right. of kind of kind of surreal science fiction in terms of like how does time travel work? But I mean. It, I feel like that stuff is akin to thumbing your nose at like, oh, a city can't fly. How in 1912? How are they going to keep an entire city levitating? But Science. when there are basic issues of believable kind of character motivations and stuff, sure. when it starts to break down for me, well, wh- and the the wh- Booker, what is broken? The Booker to Comstock transition was, is is so tenuous for me that it almost the almost the entire ending broke down. Like I, I still don't completely accept it. Like they are so profoundly different as characters. I mean, it isn't like so fucking the, different. The, the explanation I've seen that yeah. I can sort—I of, I agree Correct. with you. They don't—they don't illuminate oh, enough of that arc and transition, uh, which they kind of can't because once they've shown their hand, right. the game has to end. Right. But I, I feel I like can, they I literally s- should have done that. Like as you are, maybe if not like as Comstock is is drowning. But maybe if you saw visions of like, like his his hand, but no, he I, would have it's, the it's mark, more, right? No, because no. that happened. No, no, because that only happened to the Booker that gave his child away. Yeah. That was after. But the, that that's was after they forked. him, isn't it? That was after they forked. He gave his. Ch- that's, no, that's because that's, yeah, that's what so I'm talking about. So when when did when would the, the did the baptism take place? Right, that's like what that's I'm saying. Like right after pre, wounded, right, right after, after wounded, wounded knee. That's that's what I'm saying. So I, so I, I was under the, the assumption. I guess, I guess that maybe that makes sense. But I, I always looked at it as the baptism happened because he gave Anna away, and this was such a fucking terrible thing. He's like, no. I need to forget this, no, that, and that's why it's coming back to him here and now in these little bits and pieces because he is remembering the things that got baptized away. In this magic baptism oh, that apparently makes you forget the Booker, sort of the Booker that oh. never got baptized, never figured out how to get over his guilt, and went into the downward spiral of the gambling and the drinking and whatever, and then gave his child up to get out of it. Hmm. Whereas the, but gave his child up to because of gambling Tess. debts, because of debts. Well, they came to him. Comstock came and because saw himself in another reality where he had a child. I think that that's why he wanted the child, right? I don't know if you, you maybe did you miss the logs about Comstock. Comstock was sterile because of the machinery. No, and no, stuff. yeah, like, I saw that. Like stuff. he couldn't have his own heir. Uh, but at one point, but that was later after presumably he would have had his own heir. But at that point, why doesn't he just go out into the world and reclaim his existing child? Why does he need to go into another dimension? Because who knows what that child has become I, I, in the uh, years I apart. I, I don't. I really. And think because he's got this machine that lets him do that, or this process. But so then that requires him to know that he only exists because a Comstock before him stole his child. Right. He knows. I mean, that's the whole reason behind the false prophet, right? Like the reason that like the the world is geared 
to identify the false prophet because he knows at some point I'm going to come kill right. myself. He's, yeah. he's looked into another reality and seen the booker that they took yes. the child from. So he from. engineers the it is, city. It is, it is with old Biff with, with the branded. almanac going like yes. at some point someone's going to come. But it's not him. It's not from his timeline. It's right. from a completely different a completely different reality where he made very different choices. I mean, <laughs> if you want to get real technical, people have looked at the Comstock character model and there's a brand on okay. the hand. All so right. like that, that is... That's All fairly right. clear. I will accept that. There is or is not. Yeah. There is. The seed of the prophet. Just you know, and there's the voxophones where Comstock discovers so that they are trying to mess with the timeline and then deliberately just starts destroying the machines and... It was a hell of a fortune teller. Was Man, this fortune game is pretty. Sure is. Yep. Was in the indoctrination. It's like this painting come to life. Time rots everything. It's a sweet car. It's new for 84, you guys. Yes, coming. Songbird. I, yeah, the, it's I mean, so, the, the it's so amazing is. how much they do in this game just almost purely with art direction. No. Like, it's too late. They do yeah, more, they, 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 more fill, they fill in story gaps with that stuff, you know? But, but also even just technically, like, this is this is a pretty simple scene you're being shown here. Yeah. From, like, a ge you know, geometry level, but the way they make it look is so incredible. Did anybody choose the cage for her to wear? No, no. I did. You did? Yeah. I wanted to see what would happen. Fucking monster art. Well, the, the, the bird, for one thing, the bird looked like it was dying. It well, like also, the, the bird represented Songbird to me. Yeah, and, and that, you know, I, I, I figured Songbird was going to be redeemed. Like, that's why that's why I picked like, Songbird can't be all well, bad. Well, kind of is. He is. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Totally redeemed. Just, that's the moment of the Songbird at the end. That's that was that was the saddest part of that easily, entire game. Easily one the, of the most powerful moments in the game. And that, it's the that, smartest like, like, gameplay design they did. Is you know, it's like when, when we think back about Bioshock now. You know, I mean, you think about, about the twist, and then you remember the final boss fight and go fuck. <laughs> or you just man. don't remember the final boss fight. Right? Yeah. Literally. Or even if you're that lucky, the, you don't. Or even that the endings weren't that great. Like the, sure, the ending sure. endings. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes, you're right. They were they were not. Um, so just from a gameplay perspective, for them to you know, you spend the majority of this game going like, ah, at some point I'm probably going to have to fight Songbird. That probably won't be fun. Yep. Like, look at these combat mechanics. You're like, a flying thing? Like, I'll probably be on a rail, huh? That's not going to work very well. Uh, but what they do, I, I think, is, is so much smarter. Yeah. I was uh, a little surprised that you don't learn more about... Like, Songbird is a device in this game. But there's not really any revelation there, there about, are, like, some other of the, like, than, some like, of the Fink stuff ends up yeah, going there, there into are, I mean, there's the nature there's, of the song. There's the implication that there is a man or part of a man. Well, sure, there. because they, I mean, I, fig I figure so, this is just the, the like, extent say. of, like, the handyman. Like, this is the next step for right. for that technology. But I, I still think, like, I was thinking, like, there has to be some significance to who was the base. So that's where Vinny's at right now. I had a very poker face conversation ah. with him before we started. Yeah. Like, like, I figure, like, at some point it's just going to be like, I'm Songbird, and to yeah. stop Songbird, I'm going to have to kill myself. Well, that, that's what I mean, <laughs> having played... Having like, played, man, you're almost there. <laughs> that's what I mean, having played the previous Ken Levine games, is that you go in, like, like eyeballing everything, trying mm -hmm. to figure out, like, right. that's the thing that's not as it seems. And that's why it's, it's you know, the, the amount of time they... They spent, or the, the the amount of work they that went into the art design and all the other stuff, you know, it, it helps the game stand up to that scrutiny by having interesting, meaningful signs around where you can infer things about the nature of the world. I mean, just the fact that it comes full circle with the title of the game. Oh, right, like yeah. the fact that it's yeah. called Infinite, like right. the yeah. poker face of not explaining what that means. Yeah. And then it meaning everything. Right. Like the ending is in the title. The, the, yeah. Right. Like yeah. that's. That's really thematically incredible. And yeah. the twist is the quote at the beginning. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the degree to which even like things like song titles and lyrics tie into the, the thematic elements of the game and, the, and the, 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 you know, the cyclical nature of stuff is really impressive. Go up the stairs, dude. Just which is why the fact that like the yeah, actual ending itself stuff. is not that original, yeah. but it's, it's the way it's presented. Like, <laughs> it's really good. Elizabeth Busy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. You can't really you can tell there that. are stairs there. There you go. Yeah. Not obvious. You're, you know, well, you're following the big pipes full of energy that are. Can't get there yet. Cowering scientists. Yeah. Yeah, I killed those guys. Yeah, me Fuck too. Em. Put it on the page. Look at what they're doing. Shoot him in the face. I just Do let it. him. I let him stand there and cower. Yeah, me too. 
I just I did not jump on their head. I didn't. I didn't. I never saw. I never, <laughs> Good I never, job, Vinny. Something that only someone who knows he's being watched would do. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but I shot them in the face. I could also I see, just, like, I just always assume that I'm being watched. I mean, I, I could just, I could say, I could see, like, after pulling that lever, guys going nuts and starting to attack you, so. Right. Get just that preemptively. Also, he's a monster. I, well, I, I never, yeah. that's the thing, I never saw Booker as an inherently terrible person. Like, he had absolutely done some terrible things, but he show, show, he always showed remorse for them. That was part of my problem yeah, with the, the melee comp, attacks. The Comstock did not. Like, at what point did he just lose any sense of remorse for his, for his actions? I think it's one of those things where, you know, he has been trained to survive. He's been trained to be an efficient killer. You know, he survived wounded knee, did a whole bunch of fucking terrible shit. He was a Pinkerton yeah, for a while. He doesn't necessarily... But he's shown, but he's repeatedly shown to be a compassionate guy. And that's what know? I'm saying, is like, you know, if he, is, if he is indeed attempting to change his ways, which, you know, like, this is sort of a redemption arc for, for him, I guess, right? Yeah. Um... He is. He still knows how to do all that stuff, and will do it when provoked. And, and, well, what, I'm, so, what I'm saying is, how did he then become a complete monster in Comstock? Well, you, you know, you can, you can. I mean, because like, of the take, baptism. If you, if you take how, like, how because, because, there's, he, because, because he Comstock has no redemptive arc. Right? Because he felt absolved of all of his previous sins because of the baptism. And, but or, the, but or, it or he didn't but, even view them as sins at all. Exactly. So he internalizes it, and then through the religious sort of like. You can see, you know, I mean, there there are parallels. Like he, he gets to like, his psychological like relief a, from religion. It's the cognitive dissonance yeah. from like what you think you are doing, and yet what is actually playing I, out. I, in the I, world. I get what you're saying, and it kind of makes sense on paper, but I agree they don't earn it. Yeah, they, there needed to be more uh, illuminations of how he goes from a guy who accepts Christ as his Lord and then becomes this tyrannical monster. That operates a city in the sky. Part of it, part of it again, I think, is is the density of the ending and how much they try to shove at you in in the last moments of the game. Sure. To the point that the dual identity twist. Oh. Yeah, this part's good. No, nope, yeah, this nope. is awesome. Look over nope. there. We go. The, the nope, twist. Nope, nope, keep, uh, nope. Just look to the yeah, left. You can look over there. Look over there. Look. Turn right. around. What are you doing? Yeah, as they beg for you to to help is one of my. That felt really good. Elizabeth will be right there. <laughs> Bad way. <laughs> yep. Um. Yeah. So, so you know the, the the point about like not about the Comstock stuff. But by the end of the game, it's like they're throwing all this information at you that you didn't even know you needed, while you still have all these other questions about unexplained stuff right and there are still a few things that felt like this is a significant hint but never really panned out like the the uh, at the very beginning the guy in the the lighthouse with the bag over his head with like the note right. next yeah. to him I'm like I was I, I was talking to, to Ollie Moss uh, before either of us had finished the game and he his theory at the time was like I feel like that's gonna be significant that the guy with the bag over his head is going to be Booker or something, which sure. maybe it still is. No, I, th I always just took that as that was the... Oh, it's okay. Okay. I'm just, that's one of the variables that needed to not stop Booker from getting to Columbia and accomplishing his task. That's I, I, the early It's ones. the dude from original Bioshock. I also start wondering, like... As as we go through this end sequence, and you you know see this the, part's gross, by the way. Yep. When he pulls that out. Yep. Yeah. When you see the stuff repeating. Uh, like, hey, I know you have a big hole in your back, but if you could just read this, that'd here be I'm cool. gonna cinch you up. <laughs> but uh, like that, and like all the notes and stuff around the lighthouse about like this is your last chance, Booker. Uh, where I guess you know in theory. At least, kind of the way it's presented, is he is you know being dropped into this new reality, where there is another him. There's you know right. Comstock is there, uh, and so he is starting to forge his own you know memories and his own mm -hmm. existence, which is fine for like that's why his mo is the way it is. Uh, but then I start wondering like who put all this other stuff there. Like, did the Lutest twins yeah, like, I think, set yeah, this stuff? I, I yeah, mean, I think were, that, that's all of that. But it also sounds like as they're dragging him, like, they're hearing him come up with this stuff. Like, you know, right. the, the brother yeah, yeah. Uh, knew, like, he said, ah, oh, this is my theory that he would do this. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can't, there's no sign that he knew it was, that 
it, that Booker was going to do it in this specific way. Well, you could also, I mean, there's there's one of the theories that, you know, every time you have one of those moments in the game where it goes dark, that you might have actually died. And that, like, where it picks up next is just another instance of Booker that what you just played was, like, you know, Booker 123. Sure. But then when you pick up with, like, Elizabeth in the next section, you might be 127. So, like, those comments from the, the brother and sister may just be reflective of that one specific instance, but where you're picking up next to play next could actually be several instances of Booker forward. Sure. Um, you know, they, they, don't pur they purposely don't make that stuff explicit. Not, not to sound dismissive, that sounds a little too indoctrination theory for me. Sure. Oh, kind yeah, of, you know what? I, I ended up seeing this the, the second time. Well, someone points out here in the chat, which I'm not looking at a bunch, but... Uh, the, there's a note on the wall in the lighthouse that just says, like, this guy's coming, stop him, C. So I think the implication is that that might just be the, the lighthouse keeper or something. Okay. Comstock's like, yo, man, don't let this guy get to my sky city. Okay. What should guard it, then? Yeah, don't guard it with a dead body. That's He's not I mean, not there's that stuff, but there's also still a straight-up, like, note to Booker there that's all scrawled in that similar... We'll we'll see this stuff in a second anyway. Everything here is a cipher that I understand. Because we've got what? It's the songbird stuff. Yeah. Well, I know you still got to fight through the airship stuff. What's well, I'm saying? That, that, is, that is basically all the. This same is thing. this is like, like kind of the last combat scenario yeah, here. This is, yeah. this is pretty much it. Well, second to last, I guess. All right. I did not know what a Pinkerton was besides a Weezer album before. <laughs> <laughs> Is no, that Pinkertons I've are straight. Figured that's why he was so devious. It's like, ugh, oh, he's the second Weezer album. <laughs> <laughs> strike breakers. Fuck you. It's the hand of the prophet. Comstock's oh yeah. It's not a great follow up. I feel. Stay we're not, we're not going to get into that in this live. Oh, that's a great album. Their best stuff on there. More depressing, or uh, hopefully it'll just give people some sense of history with seeing uh, people thinking Wounded Knee was a reference to Skyrim. Oh god, I wanted to jump out the window when I heard that. <laughs> I could not. <laughs> Which is totally, you know what, that, if you don't know what Wounded Knee is, like, Even like, you know, go get yourself educated, but the, like, immediate thought that that is a Skyrim reference just really bummed me Even, out. Even but I think it also, it speaks to you know the 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 almost you know Stanley Kubrick level of analysis that people were applying to this, where trying to divine meaning from every little thing, and all that's going to be colored by your own perspective and and your own knowledge base, you know, for sure. Oh, I, you know, but that's but I mean I think it's, that's it's tempting to say like oh the education system not it's it's teaching people what matters, but does Wounded Knee really matter in today's? It's Is it's a uh, I think it just speaks to. Like the way this game invites the interpretation sure. that you bring to it, whatever your perspective yeah. is, and that's I, I ended up, uh, you know, as I was playing the game, I would end up stopping you know, a lot with the the music stuff. It's like, oh, you know, I, I have a pretty good idea what Wounded Knee was, but I should probably look this up and look up the Box of Rebellion and yeah. just kind of get a better sense of, of what this is as I, as I was playing. And I feel like I benefited from that refresher, and it, you know, it's great that. A game can have that as like this central yeah, motivation totally. for the character. It was like I was playing. knowing well that much of the audience that plays it not gonna know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> had a real uh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego moment, you know? I'm <laughs> looking up stuff. You had a real second screen experience. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If <laughs> only it had, had smart glass support. For like a you know commentary mode where they're just filling in the blanks for you as you go. I oh, wish man. this yeah. game had a valve, not like to fill in the plot holes, but right. would love a valve like, like, like commentary system. Okay, we did this here because like this is how this used to change. Like this is what it used to be. You know, like it was fascinating to read uh, Steve Gaynor's tweets uh, when he he briefly worked on Infinite for uh, maybe about a year, maybe less than that, uh -huh. and he worked on the Fink uh, Industries uh, oh. section. Oh. Um, so having him talk about how it's always super weird when you hit the button and she's right there. <laughs> oh hey, what? whoa! Uh, so Steve, Steve worked on that, uh, or at least he pitched the story beats for that, mm. and that stuff 
largely remained, but the geometry, like the combat scenario, was like oh, all that right. completely yeah. different. So it was it was pretty interesting to watch him talk about that, at least react to it, and can't imagine what it's like. As a creator, where it's like, this is what I pitched, but not what I pitched right. uh, uh, simultaneously. It's a, it's a alternate timeline. Exactly, it all fits in yeah. thematically. There's a, ver there's a version of Bioshock Infinite out there with that has all that stuff. I like seeing all the stuff from the original trailer pop in. Right, just recontextualized and. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff that just never made it into the game. Like, remember yeah, that, there's that there was that sequence they showed where it was just Booker and Elizabeth walking around that store, yeah. and yep. she puts on yeah. the Abe Lincoln head. Uh, there was the part where she tries to heal the horse out in the streets. Sure, right. that, yeah, that, that, that early demo. Is, is the Abe Lincoln head thing like, in there somewhere? I don't think so. I mean, I don't, I I don't know that. for sure. Uh, That's the I, thing. I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't dig through every single... Actually, I read there's a bar I never found. I think it's called the Salty Oyster. You know what I'm talking about? Is that where the guitar scene happens? I don't... No. No, that's okay. uh, a different bar. Some people are saying a version of the Abe Lincoln thing happens in that bar toward mm. the end of the game. Cause, because of like the way Abe Lincoln is viewed by the general population sure. of right. Columbia, well, well, you know, yeah. that would not be there that would, in, that in would the same capacity. Cool. Well, you know, you can make well, a ben, ben Franklin head or whatever. But Yeah, and, and sure. And I mean, you go back to look at that old footage, and there are posters of a character named Comstock who looks completely different hmm. from mm -hmm. anything in this final game. So yeah, I wonder if like, you know, Booker and Comstock, if that was, like, what was set out at the beginning right, that remains right. Was like, like, was like, the was the dual identity a pillar of the storyline from the beginning, or did that come in late? I mean, you know, Ken, Ken Levine's talked a lot about how their story, their writing process is very fluid, as late in the process right. as it yeah. can be. To basically, yeah, to fit the game, as opposed to you know a lot of games where they lock the story early on and build around that. You know? But like you know the the Bioshock Infinite as a name and you know the you know tears in reality stuff that those parts seem like that was there from the start. But I can see almost every other part of this, you know, being a lot more fluid as you said. Yeah, you could imagine like the Infinite Worlds concept, right? And, and like, like how solving we... a paradox mm -hmm. or like trying to alter a timeline. Probably could you know have been the broad beats from the start, but the specifics of how that plays out, or like the duality of Booker uh, being something that comes uh, fairly late in the game, uh, that that wouldn't surprise me. Oh, I right. thought this was a really cool part. This part here, which is where you're yes. jumping back yeah. and forth. Yeah, this part's pretty cool. It was like sky pirates just boarding other yeah. people's ships, killing them all. Yeah. Yeah, I would have liked like more combat scenarios like this the, one. The, com the combat is always at its best when the skyhook is involved, and it's a shame that I, there's not more. I of just it. I don't. I thought that fighting while you were on the rails. Was, I mean, I'm not was, saying that I was shooting a bunch of guys from the rails. Right. It was the mobility that it gave you yeah. to get around the environment. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Yes. All right. Also, I, also I, I it looked that. cool. As in, fact, in fact, it I, did. I, I, it did. Yes. Yeah. And if yeah. you had the area of effect. Uh, Yep, he's got gear that so that when you landed, it like kind of shook up a bunch of enemies. Like that was, yeah, was super fun to that. do that. that. Sounds awesome. Melee yeah. a bunch and then he's, just jump back on the sky. He's got it here. You can see when he lands, there's a big like okay. kind of dust cloud that shoots out from beneath him. Yeah. Yeah. This sequence was uh, amazing. If you, uh, I use, I, I use <laughs> the, the uh, whatever the octopus ability, sort of like you oh, know the, the long water. Yeah, yeah. water. Like this, it's amazing dough. for this one because you can just yank, yank a yeah. bunch of guys That's over. Cool. And then uh, use the first of that ability, which then pushes them. So you yank them over and then just throw them off immediately. That's the grossest hand. Undertow. That's the most disgusting all like hand. Barnacles coming yeah, out of all there. The barnacles are just weird holes and just, just yeah. it's easily the most disgusting of a set of I very the, disgusting hands. I thought the fire one was pretty unpleasant at the beginning when you first get it and all yeah. the flesh yeah. like basically melts off your hand. They're and, all, and, and they Booker are freaks, all disgusting. Booker but. freaks out appropriately, like on the first few yeah. of those as well. I will say Elizabeth acting, you know, like sort of weirdness of how it's contextualized aside, essentially acting as continues without a game over screen yeah. is really smart uh, and prevents a lot of frustration. Of just like replaying encounters over yeah, and over they, they again. Yeah, they really did make this a game that just about anybody can finish. It's it's not it's not difficult on the default setting, and the death penalty is so meaningless. But you know, like a lot of the the vigor upgrades and weapon upgrades and stuff, just none, none of that stuff seems really vital. There's some stuff that definitely uh, makes the game play differently and, and 
I think better, but I found. Uh, I feel like if you never went to a vending machine, you could still totally yeah, yeah. have a good time with this game. I enjoyed buying the the Murder of Crows upgrade that made it spread farther. Um, because often my first line of attack was throwing down a Murder of Crows, then throwing a fire bomb. And then just watching nine enemies just burn oh, while I pick them off. Once I got electricity, man, I, I awesome. kind of stuck with that. Yeah. Like that I wish was, I, I wish they played on normal because hard is hard. And hard, I, hard was really hard. Well, I, hard, spots, was, hard was really hard right? at the beginning for about thirty minutes, and then it got really easy for most of the game. And then when the bun, the bullet sponge enemies came in toward the end, it was fucking terrible. Yeah, it's just it, like it the, didn't give. It didn't make me feel like I had any uh, opportunity to just try stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, you had to keep your distance at all times. Like, the, the way they scaled the difficulty in this game is really bad because it's just a bunch of values going up and down. It's like, you take more damage. Well, at least from they, medium to hard. I mean, the health. Nine mode is, like, very specifically different. I think there are different, there are different, and, different yeah, mechanics to that, yeah. I think if I were to recommend but, it, I would say play it first on normal and then go back. Yeah, I just... If somebody, you played it through first on one time, I think that hard would be a lot more fun. Yeah, just so many people were saying, oh, it's just like so easy on normal and it's not even fun, so I just yeah. I went, I went hard. But. I mean, it depends on how you play, right? Like, so Jeff plays it, discovered he liked Always electricity, and then just use spam to that for the rest of the game. Like, yeah. Whereas I found normal to be really uh, creatively freeing, and then was constantly mixing up the stuff I was using yeah. because I yeah. didn't have a fear That's of time. I tried that to play been, hard and it did not work. That might have, did you end up dropping it down? Uh, only on the last battle. Okay. Um, so I, I found it was I really enjoyable. Yeah, I, I kind of wish I had done that because there are, are most of the battles toward the end of the game you can't show your face or you're just dead. So you yeah. have to keep your distance. You can't get up close. It's kind of a shame. But you just I wish, jump down there, Vinny. I really wish they had done more with, uh, or at least Ooh, better, oh. at least better oh. explained the vigor combinations. Like the only the only way I even knew those existed was from a tooltip on a loading screen. Yeah. What is that? The the bigger combinations. Like okay. What is that? Yeah. Like, the one two like, punch. Um. The one in the tooltip was if you throw Murder of Crows and then immediately zap them, you get Electric Crows. Like it, they combine. Oh, yeah. so oh, I had combine. no idea. No idea. Yeah. And there's also, there's also an achievement for strength. Yeah, that's how I knew because every they, they kept popping up. And I okay, was like, so so this uh, section here where you're on the Comstock ship and they're dropping Patriots onto the ground. Uh, I started thinking maybe they're dropping it onto Columbia, maybe they're dropping it onto the actual land below. Right. I started thinking, like, you triggering this event was going to cause some sort of horrible chaos on oh, the ground sure, that yeah. would like you ripple back, like, unknowingly. Because they, they, they act just a little too nonchalant right. about, like, yeah, just dump these guys so you yeah, can get on the yeah. rail and go. I'm like... Okay, you, you're actually causing the you're dropping a horrible thing or, you know, murder weird, machines yeah. onto someone somewhere. There I also that. felt like, you know, there are references to... Uh, you know the the administrators of Columbia having contact with people on the ground, like where they're getting the felons uh, to right. come up and, and yeah. work in, the, in Columbia for them. Um, well, you see that you know Columbia has its. Well, I guess that was the whole thing. Is like when before Columbia went rogue, yeah. it just traveled on its schedule. Right. But you know th there was obviously they had to have contact with the ground for a really. So but they maybe but maybe beyond maybe beyond maybe. those suggestions of oh we're you know. Working with someone on the ground to you know supply us with this, that, and the other. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you never really see that stuff started making me think that maybe they're going to go in a, you know, M Night Shyamalan's The Village direction of you realize like, oh, it is 1984. Like, yeah. like the, that. Or at least just like because like like they're so pulled back from the rest right. of reality that they they could be flying around for a long time and never know. Yeah. Uh, I, I would, just I like the like war a, never uh, ended for them. Jurassic exactly. Park, The Lost World, where you go to, like, real world. Right. You land somewhere, and, oh, God, patriots are everywhere. And exactly. Or some, something along those lines, that they would play with it in that way. Yeah, I, I definitely would have liked to have seen a little more about the relationship between Columbia and the rest of Earth. I mean, you get a little bit of that with the... Uh, Little, little viewers, mini, little viewers which apparently were added like, at like the very last bits of production, that like the last couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. Those things were put in there, which you can kind of tell the way they have the character models set up and the camera views. Like yeah. it's reusing a lot of assets, but because uh, having having played through it, uh, that really informed and added a lot of color. Yeah. Well, I think you know it, when you think about the way they originally started talking about the game, they spent a lot of time in the preview phase or you know in the announcement part. 
talking about the nature of Colombia and the nature of it going rogue and it doing this stuff to China and you know that stuff is not reflected in the game too deeply. I mean, it is in the, the netoscopes and, and some other the stuff newspapers. like that. newspapers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not an actual plot point. Right, exactly. And that's really interesting to me because, you know, it just about their process, about, you know, having to create this whole world before and, and think about what this world is before figuring out what the story is. Or, I guess, probably creating the two simultaneously and going, like, okay, where do these fit together? Where do we need to massage one or the other to make it work? It seems like they came um, up with the Bible first and then, you know, like, this is right, the world, yeah, this is yeah. why it exists, this is how it is contextualized in our version of Earth, America, whatever, uh, and then they figure out how the story they want to tell fits into that. Um, that was something I found kind of strange about the story with respect to the promotional cycle was that, like, they're, you know, they, they made all that ballyhoo at the beginning about, like, oh, this is an indictment of, of exceptionalism or jingoism or conservatism or whatever ism. But then, kind of halfway through the storyline, the clash of ideologies basically just becomes window dressing for the time travel right. and the, the character relationship. I think that's, that's way more interesting. Like, they, well, yeah, I mean, that's just a matter of taste, I guess, but, you know. At a certain point, they almost end up equating the labor movement with the, the horrible, tyrannical overlords. You know, it's like, oh, these guys are marauding and killing just as much as these other guys I were. think, so, you know, I, I take away from that that, you know, the, the notion that absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, it's like whoever is on I top mean, is going to... Yeah, and, and, and those, I, those who were the rebels before, sure. once they're installed yeah. in power. And, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I read some very convincing historical examples of, you know, most revolutions enact pretty... Horrific purges once they gain power yeah. and that stuff, sure. But but more, uh, I mean, just from a, like a thematic point of view, like they don't do much with the setting, right? As it relates to the storyline, at a point, you know, it's just kind of there, sure, to provide a lot of imagery. But at the same, but at the same time, it's like it is playing off of your Bioshock expectation that that will be more significant. Mm. Like to I me, guess. to me, like I think a lot of that stuff of you know hinting at things that have been core to the past Bioshock experience uh, is seems very deliberate and very smart to me. Uh, I, I guess to, to Brad's point, like, you know, they, they make allusions to, you know, like the uh, like the treatment of, like, African Americans and things like that. Very sort of, but it, it comes across, again, just as window dressing. And I found that really interesting to see a game tackle those subjects. And as much as I ended up enjoying all the time travel and that stuff, I was a little disappointed yeah. that there wasn't more of that. Right. Not because I felt like the game wasn't willing to engage with it. It's just that the story went in a direction that that stuff wasn't necessary yeah, to yeah, engage yeah. with anymore. And it's like you've got this really amazing world, right. and may maybe that's reflective of you know when parts of that were being written. You know, was like you know the 2010 election, like the Tea Party movement, like those were elements of like our national politics right, reflected right. in in the game setting, and then at some point. Uh, you know, w w you know, what is the end game of that? Right, like, right. How do you actually tell a story with that? If it's it, maybe that's just the the, the world, right. uh, but actually telling a story about how that fits in. Yeah, I'd go as far as to say they don't even tackle that stuff. They just show it and then just yeah. kind of let it be. You know, they don't, 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 make, they don't go out of their way to make a, a statement the about what's what what they're depicting. Which is a little weird because you know the Bioshock games have this idea of like you know power corrupts absolutely. So willing to make value judgments on like the, the the institution of power and what it does to a human being, but not so much to engage with the uh, it the seems, specific politics. Like the kind of, it, yeah. it seems to make sort of assumptions about like this is horrible, right? Like we can all agree this is horrible, <laughs> right? Um, which you know, fine. Yes, I I agree with you, Bioshock, but. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like that. Sometimes it doesn't tell you what to think. Well, I think I'm, I'm more interested in what it thinks, you know? Yeah. Like, not necessarily, like, this is how you should feel about this, but this is how... How, the, how, 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 this, how this world... How someone feels about it. The, the way they it. ended up addressing it or not addressing it ends up being more interesting than just having it be the nature of, we're going to hit you over the head with this morality of, hey, racism's the worst, right? Like, that's... Sure. Like, well, duh, of course it is. I don't need a video game to tell me that. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like the direction they went by making it more personal. I think think that stuff ends up being reflective of the time, you know, yeah. kind of turn of the century type stuff, um, without 
having to make the whole game be about that. And, and, the, and the times they do address it, I think, are, are really great. Like, the, 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 you come across the, the couple that is secretly uh, giving medical treatment to right. uh, yeah. some, of the, some of the African-American population of and Columbia. The, and the Irish. And the Irish stuff. Um, I think I must have missed that. Yeah, there, there's, you'll go, you go through this one apartment where you'll, you'll find that they ask you to leave uh, so they don't get caught uh, oh, giving... They have, a, uh, they have a printing press in there. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're trying oh. to like fight. Oh, oh, oh yeah. like really early on? Yeah, 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 yeah really yeah, early yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And that was great. I was like, that's awesome. Like, that's such a interesting way to... Ha- it's like, engage with it if you want. Like, see the, how that is contextualized yeah. in Colombia and how that contextualizes Colombia without, again, like you said, hammering, you know, over the head with... Uh, don't be racist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep, we're going to ride into that handyman. Did you guys ever have a handyman die and you don't know how? No. I had at least one case where, like, I was I was off riding a rail somewhere. And all of a sudden, they played the little stinger, like, all the enemies are dead. And he was just gone. No, I always... I took that to mean he must have, like, fallen off the side or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, you could have... He didn't find his body. Trap, yeah, or... yeah, like, he was just gone. I feel like Which stuff here he could be spawning in to so make I was really thankful for that. Turn right because those guys take a lot of bullets. Oh, the turret, man. Then he don't care. See, there's an achievement for killing one of those guys solely by shooting him in the heart. Oh, just not missing? That seems really tough. Yeah. There was a slow time ability. Do you guys, uh... Do you guys buy into this theory? And I mean, I... I it really doesn't have to be spelled out literally either way, but a lot of people like to look at the handyman and the songbird as being inspired by the big daddies directly. Like, I don't, I don't buy that. I think like, that uh, they. I, mean, I don't think you need to really settle that question either way. I'm more interested in yeah, yeah the relationship between the handyman and songbird. Like that's the like they they lay out with the handyman. Okay, this is. This is horrible. Well, those, well, this, this is the horrible this thing. Is, that they, they put well, them. They put them in these suits because. They have horrible cancers or whatever. Right. Probably from getting close to the tears. Well, or those, things, whatever, those things were iterative from the same starting point, right? Like, the implication is the songbird was the first try, and then they kind of went on to mass-produce the handyman. But Is that, is that implied? Yeah, yeah I would have thought it was the other way. You find, you find the log where Fink is first talking about watching a scientist in some other reality combining man and machine, and uh-huh. right next to that there are a bunch of, like, rough schematics of the songbird. Oh, okay. uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I I don't buy into the idea that Columbia and Rapture are that closely connected. I think it's, you know, they they could have easily looked into any other reality and found something. Right, right. Similar. Yeah. I, again, yeah. Like I don't I don't think you need to say yes. They were watching whatever that scientist right. it, was. It, from, it's certainly possible from, from Bioshock doing that stuff. It's, it's not. Uh, I think that gets, I, I think that would get a little too ham fisted. Oh, I, I, I mean, as far as as far as like Rapture being an echo of Columbia, I think that's like all but stated explicitly. Sure, sure, but I did like but specifically that the two cities are that tightly or, or, connected, or, 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 that or that they were is watching, responsible for or parts they were of Columbia. Watching Doctor Souchong or whatever his name was. Yeah. You're draining me. Maybe that's why I can't. When I was little, I used to be able not. I think they do a good job of implying that. Sure, that could have happened, or they were watching right. some other reality. Right, right, like yeah. they, that, that's like the good way of like yeah. playing with the expectations of sci-fi and sci-fi logic is giving you enough evidence that that could have happened. It's nice that they don't go out of their way to be like, oh, I was watching these robots in diving suits. Right. But yeah. Yeah. They don't. They don't spell it out, but it could be that way if, if you want to see it that way. But it's not necessary. I need to do this. How long did you let this go before you intervened? Oh come on. I'll Pretty yeah, not long. Yeah, me too. Me too. I kind of hope he waits a while because I want to see how far it goes. Like right, right after I did, I was kind of like, oh, maybe that was a moral choice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, maybe that, I was. That maybe was what I, I had let too. that like, go. Oh, jeez. I kind of, I kind of feel bad for Vinny that he has to play this, knowing a bunch of people are watching. Eh. Everything I've done, I've done to keep you safe. We've all made our choices. What? Seed of the prophet shall sit the throne. Walking away. Like, eh. Pivotal moment. Whatever. The mountains of man. So can you see the mark on him now? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's not there. Oh, right, 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 right. right. People have examined the model. The false shepherd Booker DeWitt, for he shall be as a wall between her and destiny. Why? DeWitt, I'm a fool. 
I've sent mighty armies to stop you. What do you make the different voices? That's that, that was one. I mean, not to get too nuts and bolts about it, but that that bugged me. You know, like you're trying to pass these two characters off as physically the same person. I could not hear Jeff Bridges. Yeah, I, I, I actually wondered if it was. It really sounded a lot like him. So here's, a, here's a question I don't know is is it here we go. When, Ask the false shepherd. Tell her. Tell her false shepherd. Tell her the truth. Tell her. Tell her about it. Okay. At some point, it's like, all right, just look. No, seriously, push the button. Oh, so they just the, the dialogue just stops. Looks like it. Oh, oh goddamn, the Vinny. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad the Vinny can be counted on to be Vinny. <laughs> Uh, I thought this was a little extreme. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, this is not what I expected to happen here, man. I will say, if Booker is not necessarily an inherently evil person, he's definitely a guy with pretty poor impulse control. Baptism, yeah. like he finally, yeah, yeah. Obviously, the the images are everywhere in this game, but like he finally oh, and, and he finally meets the the bad guy that's been hounding him the whole game and all he can do is run up and beat him to death. Uh, you had pointed out the first time that you when you go into Elizabeth's uh, you go into the tower and you meet her for the first time, she is holding a copy of the Odyssey. Oh really? Oh really? Uh, well then later like no. right right well right yeah. after that when she gets down on the ground level with you, she's holding like a like a a, a book on quantum mechanics. Ah, yeah. Also so yeah, that's the significance of that. You too. You just can't remember it. No. I'll prove it to you. Why? Destroy the siphon. The answer's behind. What was she just talking about? Why is she telling him like what he should remember? Why? Why would she display any degree of omniscience right now before the proverbial shackles have been pulled off? I think off? no. I think that's just a reflection of them learning as the story goes on. Oh, you that think she's just. The she's, multiple realities. She's just intuiting what's going on here. Yeah, because th that's why they showed the, uh, you know, like the soldiers you've killed, then wrestling with their own reality of having been killed but alive right. in a different timeline. I think that's just uh, she's she's that's she's piecing it together faster. Yeah, than, yeah that's okay. what happens okay. when you're alive as opposed yeah, to being yeah, yeah. dead. As opposed to like five minutes from now when she becomes the <laughs> like kind of the, the godlike time child. Just make sure yeah, that make sure he's dead. Uh, so um, Elizabeth's mother. Right. Yeah. You mean... That's... No, her actual birth mother. Right. Uh, you know, a character you never meet. Yeah. Well, you're led is, to is believe... Is there anything at all about... You're led to believe that that's Anna. Until the very end of the game. But no, what I'm saying like, is, like... Like... Is is there any significance to who she actually I don't, is? I don't think so. Because it's, you know, kind of a major point, obviously, like the... The bloodlines in this game are very meaningful. Uh, they never address it at all. Yeah. Uh... And it could have been. Strikes me as odd as a, you know, pretty significant thing. That For all we know, like he was never married. It could have been like a like a, a completely emotionless dalliance that just resulted in a child that he was stuck with that sure. he used as a tool to free himself. But it could also like, be something else of profound significance. Sure, it could. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm really curious. Here Given the way that yeah. this story wraps up. Yeah. They're doing DLC. They're doing yeah. single player DLC. I think they're right. doing three different. Sections? Uh, is that what they're, say they're saying? Because they say they are selling season pass. So. Um, what they do? They do they choose to just? What I hope they do is just say that story was that story. We're going to tell other stories in yeah. Columbia. Like your Minerva's Den equivalent. Yeah, because I feel like you get, you get into real dangerous territory, as we've seen with other games that try to address main storyline stuff with side yeah, content. Yeah. Um, and also, I don't, I don't want them to go and like fill in plot holes necessarily. But I'd love to see an explanation of the handyman. Mm. Right, like if there was a DLC that is all about this weird part of Colombia that was doing fusions of like human and. Um, so, so hang on, when old Elizabeth sent this this little melody back to young Elizabeth, was that meant to be like a, a song that they had never understood before? Is that like the secret song that pacifies the songbird? Yeah, the, the C A G E. Yeah, is that that's like that's a progression she had never thought of before? Was yeah, that, I guess that, or she had never the, heard it. Is that the implication there? She had like never the, been in control of the song before. Like basically the secret code. I mean, clearly she knows it because old Elizabeth is in charge of right, Columbia. Right. What I mean is that's not the same song that always plays out of the no, statues. No, right? no, no. Okay. Did not use the rails once here. Wait, really? Really. That's what I used to take out all the ships. I used it for the... 
Well, on hard, where the enemies are total bullet sponges, the the, uh, oh, the yeah, that the assassinate attack is move I'm off sure the rail is, is, vital. is super important. Kill all these guys in one hit with that. I tried this thing three times on hard. Yeah, me too. I think it was my third or fourth. I had to retry it once it. on normal. It's uh, I, I didn't have any trouble with it on on normal. I mean, I died a couple of times during it, yeah. but the ship stayed alive. For, for me, the problem got to be in this endless stream of the Patriot robots. Yep. You have to yep. figure out which of the ships is spawning those, and it seemed like when you took that out, they would stop showing up. Yep. Did not get that. And then it was and then it was over from there. At least that's how I think it worked. It's been pointed out elsewhere, but I would definitely echo the for as much control, for as much time as they put into Elizabeth, I wish they had delayed for automatic scripting for finding items, specifically money, especially at moments where she has these like emotional turns about herself. <laughs> like, hey, here's some money. Yeah, yeah or like yeah. she learns something that really important, or like when she's commenting and like, how did you kill those people? And then the all of a sudden, yeah. here's some yeah, money. It's one of the things that, that Vinny said also is he wished that it had been a little more like spec ops in that regard of like having multiple recordings for some of that stuff to, you know, like, like maybe still do it, just but just have the intonation be yeah. appropriate. Here's some money. Here's some money. Yeah, that's probably a better way to, to address it. Yeah. I found a lot, a lot of those oh. just, a lot of those songbird attacks didn't trigger. Like, it seemed a little glitchy there. Where oh, I was like sitting there holding, to... holding the X yeah. button for like five seconds and nothing would happen. I didn't have any problems. I didn't have that trouble. Uh, specifically with the ones on the deck. Where you would dive bomb the deck oh, and the kill the guys. Well, there. with those ones, it was more for me about timing of realizing, oh, by the time Songbird shows up to slam that area, yeah, those guys have moved forward into the next yeah. kind of section. All right, I'm gonna step out for a second here. I will give them one thing: having uh, played and really enjoyed System Shock Two and Bioshock, like this does not fall into that pitfall of having the last two or three hours just being like kind of bad. You know, right? Like yeah, this yeah. game is this game moves really well and is really yeah. interesting and and you know these you've got new mechanics in the very last encounter of the game, like both of those and games. satisfying and, and also like unexpected mechanics. Right. I mean, this right. would be the point where I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna have to fight Songbird. Oh, no. here's the boss. No, totally. Yeah. yeah. But both both of those games, like the 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 story turns early on and then from yeah. there it's kind of downhill. You know, it's like no the, big blue, eaved up Comstock coming at right. you. You know, right. it's. Like the, the level design stays strong through to the end, uh, it's it's paced a lot yeah, better. Yeah, and this whole sequence, I mean, you know, it's like a relatively small area, but it it, it looks great. It was it was interesting. Uh, Tom Bissell, the games writer, and then also wrote Gears of War Judgment, uh, did a piece for Grantland where he interviewed Ken Levine, sort of like writer to writer, and Tom Bissell has a theory that part of the problems with video game stories is the three act structure, uh, which is used as sort of the template for. Hollywood filmmaking, yeah, uh, or, or books, or, or what have you, uh, and Ken Levine, you know, actively admits it's problematic for him because the three X structure is just how he thinks about stories, and he he talks specifically about the ending of Bioshock One being problematic because he felt like he needed this third act after the revelation of the second act, right, uh, with Andrew Ryan and the Would You Kindly, but that that led to a very poor third act. Mm. Um, I think that. That's definitely valid, and it seems like they applied that here by holding enough, holding enough back to keep you moving through this yeah. with some sense of urgency, but then I feel like they went too far in the other direction by shoving every important thing into the very end, you know? Oh, I like that, just info dump. I, it was just too much yeah. for me. It, it was... <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate his willingness to try. Yeah, yeah. I never even thought of that. Yeah. No, that's, it's not going to work that time either. That's You're just... Don't even. No, you can. You can well, take it. Does, it does. Really? It does have a health okay. bar. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. I, I had he's, a. He's better off dealing, worrying about those guys. Though. I used like the volley, whatever. A lot. Right, the volley gun. Uh, the volley gun was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that that works really. That, that works really well on the. Uh, on the ships. Oh, I don't know, man. Okay, there we go. Get him. Get him. Oh, don't waste it. Yeah, there you go. He needs to get serious about hitting those guys. Yeah, he's. He's already halfway down, and this battle's got a ways to go. Mm. Well, I think he's almost there. Yeah. What's he got left? Are both of the Zeppelins gone? One of the Zeppelins is gone. I can't tell. You should probably just get down there and stab those guys. Oh, 
I had a problem where I, I felt like I had taken everyone out, and then there was just like a dude. Right. Just well, yeah, that's what he's got sit, going right sit, there. Sitting, that guy yeah, right there. happening right now. That proved more problematic than anything else. And actually, that's where the uh, the undertow came in. Oh yeah. Very sure. useful because it will just seek out uh, the enemies that are in your area uh, and pull them out for you. His so lunge. The, yeah, the, distance that's is huge. Yeah, the the times three melee distance oh, no. thing. Oh, oh no! What does that even say? That's uh, that's big picture uh, crashing in the background oh. because don't leave big picture running too long because it will always crash Steam. Oh great! Really? I, I learned playing this game. I think it's happened to me before. Like if you fall asleep with big picture on or whatever. It's not not great at the moment. Is that songbird? Oh, it's gotta be highlighted, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, the Zeppelin didn't even come in yet. Yeah, see, that's oh, what I was that's saying. not good. Yeah, I think with a quarter, I, I'm not sure he's gonna pull this off. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't envy someone having to do this section for the first in front time. of everybody. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I I failed this the first time too, just because I had, I hadn't. Oh, uh, more robots. Appropriately, appropriately saved up. More robots. Songbird stuff for. It took me a while to even understand that that blue thing was. Yeah, just critical. wasting time on the rails like this. That's just you know you can walk over there and kill them all. <laughs> like instead of letting them get close like that. Oh, dude, they're just wailing on that thing. Yeah, he's. I don't think this is gonna work out. I think he's got a problem here. That might is it, but is that the last Zeppelin? No, there's two. No, he already hit the other one on the other side, though. No, they're both there. Right. They both just came in. Uh, they both just wheeled in. If no more Patriots show up, he I mean, might be he, okay. He should be over there dealing with them on a personal level. Uh, too far away. I think I think he might be okay if, if, if the robots are done. No! Oh, what are you doing? I don't know. Where are still, you going? It's still getting shot. Over there. Oh, the cooldown is so long off those zeppelins too. Yep. Oh no! Nothing up here for you. I wonder if you could just straight up kill the oh, sniper rifles. Smaller there. ships. This is it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's done. Three salts. A little weird that that's the like the one time in the game that you can it's like just a fail, state. fail. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that, in some sense, that isn't learning the lesson from. I mean, it's better. Yeah. It's a better way of doing it. But to go the entire game where just don't worry, just keep playing, you can yeah, keep pushing it'll forward. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then yeah. The, and then the, this, at the very end, that's when you say, "Oh, by the way, we have a fail state." You know, they've got to create some stakes. At some point, don't they? I don't yeah. know if they do. Eh, maybe I not. feel like maybe not. Like, like reading interviews with with Ken, where he talks about like, why is your game even a shooter anyway? He's like, well, games have to have a skill based arc, you know, to deliver the narrative through. And I, if that is purely because, look, in order to sell this game, like this is the best way to to tell the stories I want to tell with the budget I want, uh, on the scale I want, uh, so they can take two get behind it. I can buy that, but I don't know. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, if, if you just want a story, then at some point, why are you making a game? You know? Uh, I think... I'm just saying, shooting doesn't necessarily have to be the way you deliver it. it. You're right, it doesn't. But yeah, I think at some point, it's like, if if you were to say, hey, we're going to take all these people and make a really nice uh, point-and-click adventure game, 2K would kindly show him the door. There is a, there is a middle ground between <laughs> a violent shooting game and point-and-click adventure. Or what is that? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Not no, my problem to yeah, figure it out. Nobody, nobody's really figured that out yet. Right. Well, you know, the question is, is it a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like, is it, well, the only thing that sells are violent shooters, so all, all that gets made are interesting stories in the context of violent shooters, because that's all you make. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's an easy nut to crack. Oh, that's also assuming that, you know, this stuff is in there out of an obligation. Yeah. You know, like... Could just be, hey, we like this style of game, sure. and we want to. And I, I think wrap it's, it's, this I think story great, around this you stuff. Know, precisely because this is such a popular form for games right now, the notion that you are able to get something like this that has some of that familiarity, but is so completely different from 
What's he you doing? know, Call of Duty and a lot of other stuff that's out there. Like, uh, I think that's really great. Yeah, I mean, I admire like when you know, like when you kind of got all that backlash about the box art, saying like, look. Who gives a shit, right? right? Like, this is so I can trick people into playing something yeah. smarter than they're used to, or their expectations of video games are video games don't do this or can't. Well, uh, yeah, I understand where he's coming from, but I mean, I give a shit when combat is, is not the best part of the game, but I have to do a lot of it to get right. to the good parts. I, mean, I, think, I think the combat right? is like, fun, though. It's I, not I, bad. I don't, I don't necessarily think that the combat is bad. Oh, but the you can stuff, sit there and say, yeah, it's the worst part of the game. The other I mean, stuff we're talking is about a game that is pretty fucking awesome. The, the other stuff is uh, a lot better, though. It, throughout sure. the rest and there, of it. And there know, is a lot better uh, shooting out there. Uh, and I just wanted to get to the stuff that was that was truly great. And, and I do love that you know the, the, the combat mechanics also tie into the narrative, right? Like, Skyline's part of the world. Yeah. The, the, the bringing in... The tears to give you. Uh, yeah, that was kind of like it's 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 very thoughtful and ties into. Do you want to take odds on whether he's going to get it uh, this time or not? Did he just get a dismount point on yeah, that other did. ship? Yeah, he did. Wow, that seems like a glitch. Why isn't he executing it? I don't know. Why what isn't he's, he using the song? I don't know bird? what he's doing. He's trying to get down there, kill it. And there's just people down there just wiping that thing yeah. out. Well, no, it's not taking damage right now, is it? It is. Yeah, it now is. it is. Yeah, there's a why Patriot. Stuff. Whenever, whenever it flashes red. <laughs> Only he had more invested more in shield. I was going to say, also, this is, this is the point where his choice of weapons is questionable. Yeah, well, like, I, I always made sure that I had a good up close and also something yeah. that I could. Well, there's there's an RPG down on the deck. Yeah, uh, there's a, there should be a volley. No, yeah, yeah volley like, he has somewhere. options here. He's just yeah. not using them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know why he has a sniper rifle. There are definitely heavy weapons to deal with those robots. He upgraded the hand cannon. Uh, I didn't upgrade any weapons. I dumped all my money really? into, into vigor upgrades. The vigor upgrades just didn't seem like things I would use. Uh, well, they made the vigors a lot more viable. Yeah, like I, yeah. I, I, uh, like I didn't want to use the vigors until they were upgraded. Uh, yeah. But I, yeah, like I said, I ended, I upgraded the electricity because I was using it so much, and the, like the chain ability was really great. Yeah, that was good. Go get those guns. Go get those guys' like guns. The, like the upgraded fire was really good for crowd control. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, stuff like that. I, I didn't use the fire that much for the same reason I don't use grenade launchers in a lot of games. Like the, the lob and the arc and all that stuff. Like, nope. Go shoot that thing. You've got songbird. Well, that's what made I used the fire in combination with the murder of crows because you didn't actually have to aim it. Basically, right, yeah. you threw it in the vicinity, and then the yeah, the yeah pieces I, that if came if off I had, lit the murder if I had of crows realized on fire. That, that 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 even existed, I probably would have done a lot of different stuff. That and the executions played through the whole game without knowing that that stuff uh, hmm. wasn't there. He needs another weapon, man. He's got six bullets and a sniper rifle. <laughs> I never even knew that this back top area was here with the sniper rifle. Oh. Seriously, take the ammo. <laughs> oh, he's trying to get over there. I wonder if that's actually viable. Yeah. Maybe you can what if you can get on the Zeppelins and bring them down from inside? I don't know. You can maybe. do that in some other parts of the game. And it just seems like a waste of time in this battle. Like, when you have those, the robots. Yep. Like, those yeah, are, like the this, robots this are what the real Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, you. absolutely. The guys are kind of whatever, but the, the Patriots are the thing that... And his, gu his little gun here is powerful. He just gets in there and gets their backs. Like, yeah. Yeah, you just gotta kind of focus on him more. That's his Achilles heel right now. It's just not focusing on... An old Abe Lincoln. Again, I might be wrong, but I'm, I, my impression was that taking out the right ships would stop the robots from coming. Yeah, this isn't going to work out. If he just hung out down here and really ran interference and killed all the ships from here, he kill might be ship, okay. Kill that ship. Yeah, you pretty, that's pretty much Is that the last how one? I ended up doing it. Oh, no, there's both white Zeppelins. That's... Ugh. 
But why is he why is he moving away from the thing? Wow, that thing is just like a one shot yeah, kill. Yeah, it's, it's, well, when he when he gets behind Upgraded the pistols, yeah, it's, when he gets behind the robots and hits them in their weak spot, like he can take them down in like slumber. five. Oh, there's more robots, huh? Yeah. Yikes. Kill it. Kill. You somber right here. Uh, it's, it's, it's already on cooldown, and so yeah. you can't. Plus, I think. Isn't that other white Zeppelin the last ship? Yeah, I think so. If he just hits that as soon as it comes back, he'll, he'll have it, I think. Uh, but he needs to take out all these other guys. He's got this sniper rifle. Right yeah, that's kind of a big if. Yeah. Shit. The robot, we need the robot. Doesn't have enough. Man, yeah, can't possess it. Yeah, this is really rotten. Salts. Salts. He just has nothing to take it out with, though. Those other yeah, guys are gonna pick, uh, other guys are gonna peck away at it. Yep. Was Elizabeth just there with the thing you needed in perpetuity? Like, was yes. there ever a point where she would stop doing that? If you, I mean, if you, she gave you health and then you immediately lost all the health. I guess she would guess not immediately go. Here's more health. There was probably some kind of timer yeah. on it or something, because it seemed like you could just like spam your vigors yeah. as much as you want and still and still have a assault thrown your way, and just keep going with it. Feel bad for his mental state right now. It's got to be like really frustrating. I'm sure he's fun. Then he don't give a f. He'll figure it out. I have I have confidence in that. Uh, Jeff, are you gonna pull up? Uh, and maybe answer some chat questions. I was gonna say I also have some email questions. I, uh, I oh, asked yeah, folks yeah, to, yeah, go ahead to and email and some yeah. stuff. Emails. Yeah, a lot of the stuff we have uh, we have already kind of touched on here. Once my laptop starts responding here. Oh, your shield is broken. All right, we've got a uh, question or a, a an email from Rob, and uh, his his email reads: "The color gray. It appears when there are rifts. Everything is gray when you die, and Elizabeth can't resuscitate you, implying uh, an alternate Booker is entering the fray, not the original Booker." Thoughts? Hmm. Nah. I mean, the Booker, the Booker that comes back in has all the memories and right. But whenever a Booker comes into a reality that's not his own, he eventually gets those memories back. Like remember when he goes into the nah. Vox dominated world, he then recalls all the things that happened there. Right. Or is he's venting memories? Yeah. That's not... Sure. Either way, yeah. it could be. Uh, a, a different uh, Booker there. That's possible. So uh, I, I mean, the, yeah, it's, it's the, the other big obvious thing that, or the you know, the connection that a lot of people have or have tried to make is the. I don't, that's I'm not even phrasing this correctly. Um, <laughs> Songbird and his death in Bioshock One. There's that video that's out there on YouTube from the original Bioshock where they claim at a certain point you can hear something in the background that sounds. An awful lot. It absolutely like, does sound an awful lot like Songbird. I saw like the yeah, like Songbird's sounds as he's dying there. Yeah. Um, that's, I have a hard time believing that that's deliberate. I think it's that's, a I think it's a funny, really cool coincidence. But yeah, I think they've they've got a sound library. They used some stuff. I mean, Songbird kind of sounds like a dolphin, right? Yeah. So they were making a game about underwater. So. You'd have some dolphiny noises. I think it's amazing and fits in coincidentally, accidentally, with the themes and the context of the ending. But yeah, like I think that's stretching for the Rapture Columbia yeah, connection. Yeah, no way. That was intentional. All right, so this is, this is where I was actually getting ago. some of the. Especially yet. considering when Ken Levine was going around uh, showing Bioshock uh, as it was being uh, at the final stage of production, he was not talking about making another Bioshock game. Yeah. So. Uh, the idea that they'd be implanting elements right. of a follow-up or, or a sequel. Uh, he was talking about a very different game back then. So. Yeah. All right, so this is Mark from Belleville, uh, Michigan. Uh, he's, and I read this earlier, and we, we talked on this, touched on this a little bit. Uh, he says, a realization I had about uh, the racism in Bioshock Infinite. 
Booker didn't have any signs of being racist. He felt depressed about murdering all the Native Americans in the battle. Comcast being... Com, 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 Comcast. 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 Yeah. Comcast. The true Comcast. The true. Wow, shock Xfinity. <laughs> The official high-speed internet. Of I gotta go. <laughs> I'll be back. It all makes sense now, man. I can't. Don't pay for cable. He's actually leaving. <laughs> Brad's taking his microphone off. I'll be right back. He's gone. Um, Comstock, being Brad the same needs. person, glorified his participation in the battle. Booker wanted forgiveness for his sins. Comstock was baptized and felt his sins were forgiven. But in actuality, he didn't feel his sins were forgiven. He chose not to view them as sins. He was just killing savages for God. All the racism is to reinforce the justification of earlier life decisions. Hence, he builds a city where all non-whites were demonized, uh, which kind of goes with uh, a coin flip. He chose one path over the other. Yeah, I mean, that fits in the themes of the ideas of American exceptionalism and how uh, early America rationalized doing horrible things to other human beings. Manifest destiny. Yep. Uh, Jingoism. uh, Yeah, that, that all fits... It's the man. I think I think that explains the Comstock uh, arc, uh, but I also agree with Brad in that they could have not made that a leap of logic and made that a little more illustrated. Yeah. Given how villainous Comstock is, uh, especially if you don't find the uh, the tape that explains what he did, mm-hmm. uh, that would be a difficult leap of logic to make on your own without like going to the internet to have it explained for you. Mm. Uh, so this is from uh, from Matthew. This is interesting. This is something I, I hadn't picked up before. Uh, the number uh, 122 is seen all over the place. Uh, possibly refers to the other versions of DeWitt trying the same thing. Uh, on the code to the rocket, number of coin flips. Uh, let's see here. Also, number of audio clips in Bioshock 1. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Here. I think that's a reference to the. Uh, I think the 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 book you start with is the 123rd iteration of the thought experiment. That's sure. how I take that. I just wonder if there, yeah, if there is if there are other significances to that. Hmm. Um, he says that and we'll have to watch out for this when we, when we get there. It seems like Vinny's gotten his hands on it this time. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the Elizabeth with the choker you chose for her is not one of the Elizabeths that are drowning you. Hmm. So the cage or the bird, right? None of those. None of them have the pendant. Well, and also one of the is a slight nod. Uh, one of the character models, uh, the Elizabeth, when you are being drowned, is from an earlier gameplay demo of Bioshock Infinite. Right. Uh, Still got it. Still got it. Sort of nodding that earlier versions of Bioshock Infinite also existed, uh, which I think is a. A pretty funny meta tip of the hat. So, but what all the DLC is the multiplayer, and they just say this is another iteration. <laughs> like, I hope they go somewhere crazy with these other single player things. I hope you know further exploration of these alternates, these kind of these parallel or it's completely Call it different. In. Call yeah, it in. yeah, may, yeah. May, maybe if he if they do a, uh, you know, is, yeah, is it pre-ending, post-ending? I don't know why is he not using Songbird. He's trying to like deal he with these guys here. Like he hasn't realized that he can put it on the deck yet. But even even still, like you know, he take, should be using now the ship. Zeppelin. Like that's why those Patriots are getting on board, dude. There we go. All right. So this is a, a, a comment or a theory that I've seen pop up a couple places. Uh, in Rapture, DeWitt activates the Bath Sphere in Bioshock 1. It is noted only a relation of Andrew Ryan can activate these spheres. I don't think Levine would have forgotten about something like that. Uh, else I would dismiss it as just a nitpick. That is uh, an interesting idea. Like there's, They already kind of create the connection of, even if not directly and literally, that DeWitt is playing the same role as... Jack or the, the protagonist of, of Bioshock 1. Yeah. I uh, mean, you, you could write that off by saying that you don't know that you are actually in the exact same universe where Bioshock 1 took place or not. So right. you could, if it could be in one where the bath, sphere, the bath spheres weren't locked down yeah, Everything like else that, is the or, same, yeah. but that part is, is yeah. slightly changed. Uh, there's, there's no guarantee one way or the other, but yeah, sure. I don't know. I, I think that's more just driving the point home of like, you know, 
there's always a character like you yeah. playing that role. Yeah. Not not that's again I think like this the Songbird audio file like searching for connections between those two cities that is getting very too specific and not not meant to be taken that literally. It's fun though. Like it's fu it's it's fun to watch people find those connections. And I do wonder how they wrestled with whether to nod hey, to kill that kill the kill oh, the zeppelin shoot. kill the zeppelin kill, kill the, the zeppelin. zeppelin. What's he doing? No, kill the zeppelin. Kill the zeppelin. There you go. The uh, how much they wrestled with whether to nod at Rapture or not, right? Yeah. Like, because in the the moment they announced this game and it had the word Bioshock as part of the the header, that was like the first thing that people were asking was like. Does this take place in the same universe? Right. They played with that in the first trailer, yeah. where it starts underwater mm -hmm. and then opens up to Columbia. Um, I, I just, you know, it invites again all of these weird questions about like Andrew Bryant connections, and clearly they thought through it enough that there are ways to explain it away uh, or not get too bogged down in that. But I wonder how much they thought about whether to or to not acknowledge Rapture. Yeah. Because they could have easily just said, there are other universes. Then you imply right. Rapture yeah, takes place. Right, without literally showing it. Uh, sure. I'm glad that they showed it. Me too. Uh, I, I think it's a cool it's a cool moment. And that you can like kind of look in the background and you can see a little sister and a big daddy. Yeah. Um, oh, apparently someone is saying that uh, there's a log in Bioshock 1 that says the genetic lock in the Bat Spheres didn't really work. So... Yeah. Not relevant. Oh, you guys are talking about the yeah. Not right now, but yeah, we that we brought that up, or someone brought that up here. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! He can keep going. Hit cancel. You can't save because because Steam crashed, right? Just hit cancel. Yeah, that's why. There we go. Oh, we got it. Whew. Oh, it's done? Yeah. yeah. It is done. Yeah, he, he got it the third time. It was done. It has been done. Okay. <laughs> it right. will done. be done. It okay. is done. Let's kick back, relax, I guess, and... Whoa. <laughs> Watch Vinny fuck around on the hey, ship he's for a while. earned this, all right? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm, a, I'm not going to I'm not gonna criticize him for right. this. But he's now, like, looking for ammo and, and health pickups the, and stuff. The bow okay. is the front of the ship. In every in every universe, Vinny is going to be Vinny. Yep. He is our constant. Oh. Booker, come here. What? What is it? Hey, Andy, can we uh, can we turn this back up here a little bit? <laughs> yeah. This will be the part where we <laughs> yeah hear it. Destroy the <laughs> He's just psyched. <laughs> it's the only way we'll find the truth. Pop my finger, Comstock, everything. The moment with the finger where you realize how that happened was 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 definitely yeah. that and Rapture were the oh. Yeah. I love the sound of the, the songbird whistle. Yep. It's just it's a sound. What's this like yeah. kind of really polytonal thing? There's weird harmonics going on there. They figure out just exactly the right kind of unsettling This is basically tones. just that, there's that episode of Scooby-Doo. I want to say it's the one with uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis? No. Just Jerry Lewis. No. What? Uh, where they have to play F-E-E-D on the organ and it opens up a whole secret where thing. Is he? Where is I don't he? think Jerry Lee Lewis. So no, I, it was not Jerry Lee Lewis. It's, uh, it's the oh, guy that go. was in Smokey. So when uh, so when you got Smokey here, I didn't look around at all. Me either. Well, he's doing it now. In fact, he doesn't even give a shit. <laughs> yeah, this was, I thought, oh, one of the most heart-wrenching moments. Like, missing, this is fucked up. You're missing, like, Go maybe... Go back! You're missing the most poignant scene, maybe, in this whole game. He doesn't care. You get the gist from the dialogue. <sighs> That's God not the same. Damn. Come on. I'm sorry. I, he is obviously more blown away, blown away by, oh shit, we're in Rapture. But it's also, it's also a fantastic transition because if you keep your... If you keep your framing right on the windows and you see the color scheme and it's like, ah, there's the wood paneling and the sea green, like, that looks like Rapture, but you're kind of too caught up in the drama. And I don't know, I, I did immediately, like, look, yeah, I didn't I, walk I away, but I looked too. around and I'm like, yeah, oh, shit, I, I yeah. No, I did what Where Brad did. I was too caught up in the songbird 
I was surprised then, at how much I cared about what was happening. Right, because right, it's 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 handled in a really an really here. touching and kind of melancholy way. But then you pull back and look around, and like it was just chills at that point. I was just yep. like, I could not believe what I was seeing. Over here. Like I've got it's really I've, fucking crazy. I've got some problems with the ending, but this is not one of them. Like this whole sequence here was incredible. Ah, uh, it's fine. Uh, oh, that's gonna keep happening, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Every single checkpoint. Well, the one positive of this game having long, not well placed checkpoints. This is where we have to go. There's only one more. Why? What is going on, Elizabeth? What no, do no, you that mean that this one. is a doorway? I'll have to show you. You'd find a way to kill yourself here. Would you come out of the chamber? So. <laughs> <laughs> So cool. Such, yeah. such a great way to fold these two together. Yep. Probably gonna regret this. Without it being just like, it's, it is fan service, but also it serves the story and the setting so way, so so well that. Uh, One of the best lines. I saw. It. Hang on. Yeah, this is really good actually. City at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Troy Baker. Like maybe a little much, but yes. but I appreciate it. But also just reminding you of how incredible, like you know, this is a, a better looking version of Rapture yeah. than we saw in the original. But just the, the again, the art design, the concept, looking at it, it's like this is still this amazing looking and insane place. Look at that! Oh, yes. Thousands of doors opening all at once. Oh my God, they're beautiful. Oh, the stars. I feel like maybe they could have been a little more explicit about the destruction of the siphon and the impact Come that on. would have. Come on, it's yeah, this way. Yeah, so or, or, or like, the, like yeah, the, like, like this this transition for Elizabeth, I think, it could have I, been a little. So more I want. Oh, I guess there's one more. So I wanted to bring this up. This is not necessarily my perspective, but I wanted to present it for your consideration. But the most cynical way that I've seen some people react to this to is that it's no good. Elizabeth goes from being a character to what I've seen a lot of people refer to here, as a plot I robot. Like she becomes this oh, just like vehicle just for like this, this kind of like omniscient vehicle for exposition at the end of the game and basically just like all of a sudden all of the answers are revealed to her you know and she just starts laying them out one after the other. Well, I think that you know I, I think that they do lay enough of enough groundwork for that to make sense. Yeah I mean they, the they, they, the at least they, they, they could have, justify it. Uh, like it it could have been handled. They could have justified it a little more explicitly. Right. I feel like it's it's That's like her, they were using at least in part the powers of Elizabeth to run Columbia. Yeah. Like the siphon wasn't just uh, yeah, to take sure. away her power. It was oh yeah. Oh yeah. To use absolutely. it for themselves. I don't. I don't mean that it's not justified that she would have all these but, answers. No, but then, just... but then that when they destroy that siphon and she now has all of her like what she's been doing has been with a fraction of what. She oh, I know did. that. I know. Yeah. I know why she's able to do this stuff. I'm saying from a narrative point of view, like she loses something of her character sure. in this transition, and they just sort of start laying it all out to you very quickly. But yeah, this, the, I, I accepted that when the siphon was destroyed, it, right, like, right. suddenly uh, she. Yeah, has, I don't. I don't disagree with with. All it would have taken is you know just a light, like her eyes could glowed for a couple seconds. I don't. I don't I need it. You know, there's like a. I don't need it spelled out any further. Again, I don't, again, I'm not talking about in-world believability. I'm talking about like quality of writing here. Sometimes. I don't know. I like it. And at the end of the day, she was always the means to the end, like. She just becomes more explicitly so in the ending. Maybe some money over here. Yeah, I did this too. Yeah. And, felt, and felt, I was like, I'm okay, I should just keep going. Yeah. Like, there's, Maybe I'll, I'll find a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> or a pineapple. Yeah. Look. It's us. Not exactly. We swim oh, yeah, in different like oceans, part. but land Yeah, all, all that said, this is like a really elegant jump. representation. I did that too. I was like, do I jump if he jumps? Is that <laughs> <laughs> This is this is an incredible way to kind of visualize the sort of abstract concepts that they're that they're talking about here. Yeah, that's like the Bastion builds. Yeah. No one tells me where to go. All I could think about was the Dark Tower. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, see, I've seen a lot of people. It is comparing it to that. It's a lot of people bringing up Chrono Cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I saw. Uh, it was a, only a couple of people, but it was a kind of a ridiculous thing. And people were like, I can't believe they just like retcon trivialized the original Bioshock. Well, that's what I was saying. Stuff. Like, or, I, I was I just saying like, I don't know what it's been like two hours ago now. Like that. If you well. Maybe we'll talk about it when we get there, but if you see what is about to happen as cutting all of this off at the source so that nothing ever happened after that, mm -hmm. then that does kind of imply that none of the Bioshocks happen. I don't, but I don't, I don't, I don't, subscribe, I, to I don't subscribe to that theory. Yeah. I, think, I think this creates one timeline where there's a happy ending. Or a potentially happy ending. You know, like the yeah. epilogue well, stuff does not, not even, necessarily give you... It's not even happy unhappy, it's just preventing Columbia from manifesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Preventing Comstock from ever existing. Yes. But... In at least one time. I mean, well, let's see what she says. Like, to me, it always, or to me, it, it sounds way more like we need this to never happen ever. You guys think he's going to go back to the other one? <laughs> I did the exact <laughs> same thing he just did now. Oh, I, I just made my choice because I was hoping that it would be a, like, no matter which way you go, it'll be fine. Well, I was hoping it would be the, the opposite, that you would get, that there would be some I know this unspoken choice. I was here. Ago, right okay, right after Wooden Knee, he does say. Okay, okay, okay. I was looking for. Come on now, time's a waste. Why were you here? And you only really know this with the subtitles on, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's implied to the voice in the model, but it is the same preacher. Yeah. Are you ready to be born again? Take my hand. No. No, I don't want to. You already did, didn't you? <laughs> I, I did this. I totally did this. I'm going to that building. I don't want a creepy preacher. Uh, at this point, I was like, "All right, game." Yeah, I don't know. When you're, I, I don't need to see. I don't need to try and break the world. When you're this deep, I thought maybe this, that, that would be a choice. There'd mm, be like a reject sure, baptism. Sure, sure. Are you ready to be born again? I am. Do you hate your sins? I do. Do you hate your? The animation is is yes. Really interesting. It's like not quite human. It's kind of stiff. I know they did do some performance capture. Hell yeah! Do it! He's psyched! Stop it! What are you doing to it? Get off me! Get off! You didn't go through with it. You think a dunk in the river is going to change the things I've done? Let's get out of here. Hey, look. These doors of yours, they're all tears, right? We'll open one up. Open one up to Paris. I want to be shut of all this. Not until we find Comstock. Comstock's dead! No. He was here. This way. Oh, snap. Yeah, over in the bushes. <laughs> I'm hiding out. Hiding out down there. My debts. Bring us the girl, and wipe away the debt. This is the man who hired me to find you. Really? Yes. The girl for the debt. Wait, wait, no, this is wrong. What is this? It was no, it was no baby. There was no baby, and if there was, I sure as hell wouldn't give it over to this guy. Booker, you don't leave this room until you do. Do it. Time is running short. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. No, literally, the scripting will not continue. I don't think it's non-trivial that that baby no. looks pretty you normal and not want. super creepy, but that is not an easy thing to pull off. You know all this? Well, also, all like, clearly being, behind all the doors. like, and behind features one, reminiscent of I Elizabeth. Like, as soon as I saw the baby, I, like, that connection was instant. What choice do I have? The debt's paid. Yeah, I mean, even the color scheme of the Mr. swaddling and the... Right. Hair. But no one else has those, no one else in this game has quite the same proportion of features as Elizabeth. Yeah, right. 
similar like eyes. Like they're cartoony, the but eyes. they don't have like the, yeah, the, the eyes. The size, size of the eyes. eyes. The eyes are very clear. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. There was no baby. The deal was I go to Columbia to get you. Booker, they're bleeding. Oh. I remember what I remember. Now we've upset him. I don't expect this next bit to do much for his mood. Come on. <laughs> The best characters in the whole game. Yeah. yeah, those two. So much fun. And they make me want to like play through again more than any other yeah, element because I mean, they, they lay down the most cryptic shit. Go on with our yeah, I mean, that's kind of all. Lead. Playful and cryptic are all you get out of them until you know what's going on. Like Lady Comstock? So, like, you know, a lot of that stuff I didn't necessarily million, absorb entirely the first time, so I'd love to it's not over because the take, a, take another look. I also, you know, this stuff is, is great to, to see this beginning stuff at the end again, but I also want to just straight up play the, at least the beginning of this game. Hey. Hey, the deal's off, you hear me? The deal is off. It's Give her back. Fine, Give her back. Fine, are you mad? I let this play out for about a good minute. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see how, and there's a ton of dialogue. There? Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. No, no, no. Shut down the machine. No, shut it down. Shut down the machine. No, do it. Give me back my daughter. No. Anna. No. No. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Anna, I'm sorry. She's gone, Booker. Anna's gone. You shared this room with your regret for almost 20 years. Until one day. A man came to you and offered you a chance at redemption. A chance for us to be together. I told you it was luck. See, all you know it is. The question is. You suppose he branded himself as some sort of penance? Mm. Okay, so the Lutess twins deliberately pulled this Booker in oh, yeah, yeah, to start yeah, yeah. this kickstart this chain of events. I just wasn't sure if the significance of that tear there was just Elizabeth taking you to another moment or illustrating. No, this is this, this is, is what happened. Yeah, totally. Okay. I don't know if you found the lot. The log. Again, like you said, so much at this yeah. point that you're absorbing. Yeah, you know. and watching this now, I actually dislike this less than I did the first time because this was not clear. You're still reeling from the revelation of the of the right. parenthood and the finger, and it's hard. And, and to, I definitely did like. You guys, was that the time when you guys figured it out? This is where it started. Or did you figure out which part? Which part? That Elizabeth's your daughter. Uh, as soon as I as saw as her in the crib. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, when he I says, give me. Out back on the airship. This is all uh, this at is. what point? Because, uh, I mean, uh, Comstock couldn't have a child, and DeWitt says, um, the woman in my life died in childbirth. Yeah. Oh, so you have a child? No. So where did DeWitt's child go, and where did Comstock get a child? Mm. See, I had at the, at the I time... I violated my own rule. I thought about it too much, and then I blew it. At the, <laughs> at the time, I chalked that up to just, like, double underlining the personal tragedy in the backstory of DeWitt. Right. So that you, you just know, that, yeah, like, no, Booker's backstory is really gnarly, even if you don't know the specifics of it. Like, there were elements, like, it was clear the way they kept repeating the, you know, bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. And how, like, vague, like deliberately vague it seemed Booker was about who he was bringing the girl to. Are you sure? And, you know, why. Yeah. I have to. It's the only way to undo what I've done to you. I don't understand why she asks him here if this is what he wants when she's the one that forces the issue at the end. Yeah. Are you ready to what be born this? again? Are 
Why are we back here? This isn't the same place, Booker. Of course it is. I remember. When... It's easier if he accepts it. You're not... You're not... Who are you? You chose to walk away, but in other oceans, you didn't. You took the baptism. You were born again as a different man. I think all the way on the left, that's original Elizabeth, right? Like an old character model. Not just in this world, but in all of ours. Smother him in the crab. Smother, 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 smother. smother. Before the choice is made. Before you are reborn. And what name shall you take, my son? He's Zachary Comstock. He's Booker DeWitt. No. I'm both. So there is still one Elizabeth left there. The note plays and it cuts to black, well, but, you, but you, you don't see her fade away. You could say that cut to black is her, is the last one fading away. You yeah. know, it's, could it's, be. Or you could say that, that fade to black is them it's not, all, you know, not saying one well, way yeah, or the other. Yeah. I mean... And I love that they threw in the title card again to, hey, <laughs> you sort of knew all along. We told you up front. Infinite. I don't know how they make... Another Bioshock game yeah. after this. I feel, in I, some I ways, I wonder thought. if this is Ken Levine well, writing himself into a corner. Play the credits. He didn't. Why did he not get the credits? Weird. Hmm. I, th I think if you play the credits, you're not going to get the epilogue. Shit, that sucks. And he has no saves. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. No. Well, because there is that scene. Yeah. We can inform him. I don't know. I, I took that, that post credit scene to be... Symbolic of it, you know wiping the slate clean and also the credits. And who knows? It's, and, and it can still or it's, wrong. Yeah, Booker or can still be a horrible all person all over again. I mean, but that's no, also the Vinny Caravella. You got to <laughs> shoot Songbird at the airships. That just, it wouldn't go. <laughs> Were you having trouble with it Come over here and yeah, put it on the mic. Let's talk. I'm tired. I bet you're emotionally drained, aren't you? <laughs> Where'd you get a mic on, man? <laughs> Does that all make sense, everybody? You didn't, yeah. you, you didn't get the credits Perfectly. for some reason. There's yeah, a little, you skip the credits or there's something a little, happened. There's a little scene after the credits. Uh, can't, watch it from, can't watch it from uh, the credits? Not, of not, not easily, no. what did I miss? So the credits end, and you're back in his office room. Mm -hmm. And you hear... You don't hear a baby coming out of that room, but you hear like a music box kind of thing or something, right? I think that's right. Either and way. Either way. And you get up and open the door, and they don't show into the crib, but he says, like, Anna? And there is a crib. Got the black. Implying that the baby may actually be there. And that you're alive? Or right. who knows? That's or a booker is alive. Something has occurred. Did you guys come to consensus? About what? Do you, what, what, what do you think What happened? do you think? We've, we've been talking about this amongst ourselves and reading stuff on the internet for, like, a week now. Uh -huh. So our curiosity is... You fresh out of the room, having just seen the end. What do you think? How did it work? <laughs> How did all that happen? Yeah, just off the cuff. Sketch it out. Yeah, a Tom rough Lund, idea. Tom Lund. String theory. <laughs> uh, I yeah, there's there's some super positioning going on here for sure. Some weird stuff. So it's like you're. I mean, you got to take like a couple of things for granted, right? These multiple universes, right? Just out of the gate, just say, hey, those. Not exist. Just multiple. Infinite. Infinite universes. Say, hey, those exist. And then they're playing off of each other, right? So we'll just take that and can't dispute that, right? That's happening? Yeah. All the time? Yeah. And unless you want to dispute it. No, no. I, I, in order for anything to make sense, it works. So Booker goes, he has a kid, and then uh, another Booker in another universe who, who turned into Comstock when he was baptized mm -hmm. goes to steal the kid from the Booker who wasn't baptized because mm -hmm. he knows there's a kid there, a baby, mm -hmm. to go do. So that Comstock slash DeWitt Steals the kid, and that's basically it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 So here's so here's a question we've been talking about that we don't have a resolution on: is Booker on Booker? 
when when that the, does the ending imply that there is a, a brand new timeline where there can be a happy ending or where Columbia doesn't exist, uh, or does the actions uh, at the baptism imply that it eliminates all the other timelines? Like, are there other timelines where Columbia still continues to exist? Well, if you didn't mention that bit after the credits, I would just say it's over. But right, and that's that's, that's kind of where I'm at with yeah. it is. The bit after the credits and the you know them being ambiguous about that final Elizabeth, you're like, well, I, I think you could read it as this is utter futility. Yeah. Uh, this stuff's going to happen forever. All you've done is yeah, create like a, a new potential timeline where this doesn't happen. I don't but, think there's any way to answer that question. It could be yeah, totally go yeah. either way. I, I like if they didn't have that bit after the credits, I'd say they it like el- destroyed the loop and like that's right. it. Resolve the paradox. Yeah. Ken Levine doesn't want to make games anymore. I think it does <laughs> still. I mean, with that with that post credit sequence, it does still potentially destroy Comstock, destroy Columbia, but leave Booker and Anna. That's how I see still, it. Still, still existing. That's, I mean, it's it's basically that, that that timeline of remorseful Booker who went through Wounded Knee, you know, had the child, uh, but then doesn't have his existence interrupted by Comstock stealing his child. Like it, it allows him to achieve. His you know, his penance, you know. Yeah, he gets without to have his without daughter. yeah without becoming a, a horrible monster that you know wreaks this awful evil right in the form of Columbia. So the ending is the Booker that went to get baptized gets killed. So the only other uh, option is for the Booker who doesn't get baptized. Right, because survive. he is at that point because he killed Comstock. Like they talk about, like the multiple versions of a person existing in one place and starts like overriding one, like, I, once he kills Comstock he then is Comstock in that reality so if that's the same Booker that then is pushing through the rest of the ending of the game by by that Booker drowning also Comstock is drowning all of it's dead yeah all the Comstocks and the DeWitts except for that bit after the credits you mentioned well, that's what I'm saying is by uh, by removing Comstock, it allows Booker to then exist again unfettered. Do they show in the but after the credits? Does he have any? He doesn't have any, the scar in his hand or anything. I think you see the hand. I don't think you see that stuff. Mm. You look in a mirror. <laughs> no. Nope. I, la- I, la- I laughed this morning when or I, <laughs> when I saw you when we walked in yeah. and we were talking about how close you were. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I'm really curious to talk to you about it, like you specifically. It was like. Oh, what is it like the Dark Tower with infinite worlds? And I was like, no, 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 not n- <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shit. Yeah, it's Nailed it right up front. Yeah. And also, you're not Songbird, or maybe you are. I, I think I don't know. Really the, I wish they would have explored the Songbird part. I thought, but if Dewitt's Comstock, then you know, I thought Dewitt would be a Songbird. Nope, even crazier than that. Uh, you got any loose ends? Stuff. Yeah. That's, that's so where? Did, so where hmm. does where does the Bioshock underwater part fit in? It's just another another lighthouse, another man, another city. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> but I mean, they're essentially painting Rapture as a version of this sequence of events in a universe so far removed that the the variables made it manifest in this way. But there was no there was no little girl in that, was there? No, but uh, but that's there's, the point. That's the point that like there's constant, it's just a little sister. constants and variables, right? I mean, well, they said that there were the three constants: man, she, lighthouse, city. Mm. Everything else is up for grabs. But wouldn't she? Isn't she like? What is she? How'd she get so crazy? That's think, a good question. One of yeah, the theories. That's, that's, the that's theories, one of the hand wavy, like ah, it's science fiction. It why, why she has these abilities? Like, why she? Is well, no, special. no, no, no they, they, specifically they because her pinky is in. That, that, right. is, that is in the game. Right. So that is in the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had seen that theory. I wasn't sure if that Jesus, was. Well, like you you picked up the log ones. because it's part of the, the critical path. Like it's, it's oh, okay. when you meet her, and it's it's Lutas talking about like I think a small part of her remained from whence she came. Okay. It's more about what she isn't than what she is. Right. So, but, it, but even with that explanation, I still find it kind of ridiculous that she's like the god of time because her pinky got cut off. Right. So, what is it? What yeah. are they siphoning? It's it's some kind of control device. Like they're suppressing her powers and controlling, well, like, what, like siphoning what, her yeah, rift si- juice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's siphoning yeah. like the spirit of Gaia, they're draining her salts. I don't know. Her, uh, no, it's it's you know the materia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's this uh, plot device. Okay, that they're siphoning mm. away. Siphoning this MacGuffin. Uh, that's and what were they doing with it? Uh, well, I, I imagine, or I had, uh, read into powering, it that they were at least powering some Columbia. elements of Columbia off of that. But they would have had to. I mean, uh, they no, had I to create they were, the the ability to make those rifts before they got her because they had to create one to get her. Right, but we don't know how big Columbia was when this started. 
versus uh, what, I think what it, was, it has become. They were purely using her power to like see other places and get yeah, ideas, like that's why he's steal the prophet. ideas. Uh, that's right. why they, they like address the, it. They're like it's later addressed. Like he's not necessarily a prophet. He just has a really good, you know, eye into probability. Yeah, he has a cheat code. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's not it's not keeping Columbia afloat. No, there's a, there's a log that explains that right. very very dismissively yeah. as well. No, I saw that stuff. Yeah. Just ah, yeah. so quantum like, particles. So right. could, could Dewitt or Comstock or anybody have just closed the portal on their pinky and gained those powers? Sure. I go. mean, the like the Lutes twins obviously are completely untethered from time. Well, they said he said they monkeyed with the machine, right? Yeah, like, they they got too deep in. I think was the implication, right? No, it said Finch in one of the logs. It said Finch monkeyed Fink. with their Fink monkeyed with the machine when they were using it, and that like zapped him into. Well, she, she she found a, a male version of herself in some universe, and right. apparently and apparently was just entranced by that concept, and they met up or whatever because they had been communicating through right. quantum tunneling or whatever. Uh, but it's not really explained how they. My impression is that after they met up, they became like the Ur version of themselves, right? It's like every Lutess is embodied in this one Lutess, right? Like there are not other Lutesses in other universes that they exist in every time. And place I guess I guess yeah, they are the. Like they have essentially mastered the, the the transit of these different planes, but but there's also a lot of suggest there's some some voxophones out there that Fink deliberately killed them while they were messing with the machine because they were Comstock? getting ready. Like yes. they were going to say, they "Hey, Comstock they're going to reveal the truth Fink about to Elizabeth. kill them because they were yeah, yeah they were going to start messing with the timeline." Uh, like the same way, like you know, same reason that Lady Comstock gets killed. Is anyone who is not willing to right. keep the secret of right. of Elizabeth gets done? It just so happens that the way that Fink tried to kill him turned them into maybe time lords. Yeah, or maybe, whatever. That's, maybe that's what it was. They're sonic screwdrivers. What, what did you think about the dual identity stuff? Did you buy it with the Comstock duet? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah I mean that no, that's the clearest part of the whole no, thing. But but I'm not saying did you understand it. Like did did they sell it to you well? Sure. Like, given all the differences between those characters? Well, in terms as, of their soon, as soon as you say there are multiple timelines and, and infinite parallel universes, you yeah. can pretty much sell me anything. Like, I, I kind of have to, like, I, how do you argue against that? It's like, <laughs> sure, yeah. I well, guess so. Yeah. If you say I'm com Comstock, then I'm Comstock. Yeah, like, who, I don't even know what that Comstock, maybe he's from a different dimension. Like when well, they talk about how, like, like, he's sterile and he is aged prematurely because of his, you know, exposure to all the Lutes fields or whatever they call them. Yeah. That that's that's you know accounts for a certain amount of his physical change, uh, but it's also one of those things where it you know I, I could see why people would would be upset by that because they don't they don't really like drop a lot of hints or lay right, a ton of groundwork right. before very, the the end of the game. It's very abrupt and then cut to black and the game's over. Like you, yeah, you have no time to come. But to I terms do with like it. that a lot. It's, it's, I really enjoyed the just like. Here it is, and then done. Well, now you're just left like cold and alone in your oh, house. So, yeah, yeah, that moment when it goes to black, and you're just sitting there, you're like, oh no, what? <laughs> oh god. But what about? Oh, oh Jesus, I need to go to a message board. Well, yeah, just, and have yeah, someone explain like, this to me. Yeah. Of like, you're not getting any more answers from this game. Like, it's not gonna. Like, you can go back and dig and find it, but just the idea of game's over. Go and think about this. Now. That's what I'm right. about. I mean, I think it's worth it's it's certainly worth talking about in a small group like this. But I never felt compelled like, oh, I need to go to a message board and dig into charts and graphs and stuff. Like, yeah, I, mean, I was like more just curious to see other people's interpretations of what was going on, or if there was anything that I had missed that right. that would have elaborated on the Booker Comstock connection. So, I mean, yeah, like I found it more enlightening to go and find like the Vox phones that I'd missed. Mm -hmm. That was like. I wonder how that's answered. Like, oh, it is addressed, or yeah, it's yeah. insinuated from this Vox phone that people have then just gone and chronicled, like, you know, the 12 or so that I'd missed. Mm -hmm. See, I, for, for a, a good chunk of that game, I was not making the connection between, uh, uh, you know, the, the sister Lutess, uh, there being a, a version of her that is actively working with Comstock, or had worked with Comstock, and these two characters that keep showing up. Mm. I well, played with subtitles the, on it at some point. They just addressed them as Lutes. Okay. Like, oh, I, I, okay. I did not use any yeah. do they, subtitles. Do they do that from the, the first time that she shows up? No. Okay. Uh, so I, it took me a while to kind of make that connection. Yeah, I never used the Because you never really... You, her being, you know, the city's, uh, uh, you know, scientific mind or whatever, like, that's shown through, uh, you know, kinetoscopes. Yeah. And it's, it's referenced in a few uh, voxophones, but you never see that live. 
and so I, I kind of had trouble making that connection initially. So stuff like that was was worth for me going and, and digging a little bit. Sure. And there are some really yeah, looking at the uh, you know people have done timeline stuff, kind of flow chart stuff for like all right, where are you at this point in the story? Where is this character kind of origin stuff that uh, it, the one that's out there that's that's kind of prominent is, is pretty good, uh, and it seems like they they don't use too much stuff that's speculation. So in the, in the in the Bioshock Underwater one, in, in that one, there is no Columbia. No. no, that's a different reality. Okay, that is Columbia. That is that version of Columbia. Rapture yeah. is Columbia. So it does, and then so the timeline doesn't matter. Like when it's happening doesn't matter. At no. some no. point in time, yep. there's a man, a city, and a lighthouse. Yep, doesn't have to happen. It, it, so yeah. you could have your sci-fi weird future yeah. Bioshock. Like you go way. You know, past. If, if you accept that there are an infinite number of these right. situations. Then in some of them, none of these events have to necessarily play out this way. So, so could we so go? They to could keep making games in, in this exact style. At the same time, I think if they ever make another Bioshock with a man, a city, and a lighthouse, they have screwed up. Yep. Well, I feel like this is Kevin 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 needs a cyber lighthouse. Nope. 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 Could you go to the Giant Bomb database and look for games with men, lighthouses, and cities and see how many other Bioshocks have already been made? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Are you saying that games that are not even Bioshock in name are already Bioshock? That's right. Yeah. Somebody quickly give me the synopsis of the System Shock. I need to know what's the space uh, lighthouse, the space eh. man, and the you know, space city. So you're saying it doesn't... Brad, you don't think it uh, no, crosses over to other Shodan shops? Is a absolutely lighthouse. not. <laughs> absolutely not. I mean, because both of the Bioshock games, you've got like this really intense ideologue who is kind of driving everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's not, not necessarily you. the constant. Yeah, that's not constant. That's I think it is, though. Though. isn't it? It's a man, a city, and a lighthouse. Well, maybe the man is the ideal. I mean, well, I guess in this case, the man is in in but the city. The man is both. The city, but the city always embodies the ideals of the man. Yeah, right. In both cases. No, well, it in the examples always, we've seen, yeah, in those two cases, yeah. yes. I think that's part and parcel. With I'm the saying, thing. like, if they're if they do another one, it would. F- Given those two, and that that those are the two analogs with with the man and how it is manifest in the city, I just don't know how they can do another Bioshock. To me, it, it would come, it would come across as really. I think it's it's a difficult challenge that it would be, and it would be interesting to see them try to tackle it. But if it's just another ideologue not, yeah, with the city yeah. that is manifested well, yeah, from I mean, that, that would be boring. well, yeah, it would be. But so, I, I wouldn't expect that they would do that. In, in in Booker Dewitt's original, I have a kid, the, the one where he mm-hmm. push, pushes the kid through the portal. That yeah. one. Uh, there is no, we don't know who the man, the city, or, or what, what is the story there, right? Like, or are they combined? Uh, well, I don't there think, is... I don't think it, it does, it's not necessarily that every universe has one of those, right? I don't know, didn't she say in every one Just of in these? every every door that she looked through and saw that. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm. But hmm. What I know is that we have a show in 24 minutes. Do we? Oh, yeah. Should, okay. Should probably eat lunch. <laughs> um... Gosh. You think anybody knows it? You think Ken has a clear answer? He's like, ah, you know. I hope not. I would like to hope that it was written to mm-hmm. to serve this product yeah. and, and be done with it. Right? And be vague. I mean, it doesn't need to be. Yeah, I, I you know, one of my first, you know, our, our old friend Joe Fielder is one of the writers on Bioshock Infinite, and one of my first impulses is, oh, I'd love to talk to Joe about a bunch of this stuff. And I realized, no, what I want more than that right now is to talk to uh, every, you know, other people who have played through this and experienced this and you know, see what their interpretations of this are before talking to anyone who might have you know more uh, of an inside perspective on that. It was a fun this game. It's more interesting to me right now. It was cool. I enjoyed my time with it. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to have to call this a, a show for now. Uh, thank you guys for, for joining us. Thanks to Vinny for uh, powering through the end sure. of no, Bioshock Infinite. I get to play Bioshock Infinite at work. That was, yeah, boo-hoo. Thanks for Andy for powering through in the control room. Yeah, Yeah. Andy in the control room, thank you so much, and uh, everyone at home, and uh, the rest of my talented panel of experts. Uh, That is our Bioshock Infinite uh, spoiler show. Uh, If you're watching this live and you're a Giant Bomb Premium member, uh, join us shortly for Unprofessional Fridays. So what are we doing? Hard gear. I'm I'm taking these shoes off, and whatever (laughs) happens after that, fuck it. I don't know. Let's just Uh, eat. Let's eat lunch on the show. uh, No, no, we'll figure out something else but we'll be back soon uh stay tuned and again thank you guys for for watching